Well, last week in Sacramento, the Hornets had to play through a monsoon when they won their second round game to get to the quarterfinals. Nice and dry tonight. A little bit chilly in Northern California, though. Not bad at all for a Northern Cal night. <laughs> no, no, 50 felt chilly to me down in the field. Not for you, though. You're toughing it out in your suit. Trip to the semifinals on the line as we get going here from Sacramento with Incarnate Word getting the first touch and Cole Wilson who had the winning touchdown last week is dragged down just outside the 21 yard line. So the record breaking quarterback Lindsey Scott touchdowns responsible for he's already broken the FCS single season record. Yeah Connor and the thing is he has just gotten better. You know when you're a seventh year guy you've seen a lot but they talk about all the things that he can do and how much of a student of the game he is. Let's see how much he studied the Sac, Sac State defense can really get after you. Yeah, it is obsessive studying we can get into that a little bit later but uh, Lindsey Scott is a note taking extraordinaire. Well, they start on the ground with Marcus Cooper and he squeezes through for a couple yards so he gets four on the first play of the day. This is a, a air heavy team sometimes but they can run it too. They will and they will go tempo right away. You can see that against Sac State. And first throw of the night for Scott. He's taking a shot looking for Grimes and it's broken up incomplete. So Dylan Junell breaks it up and there's Grimes one of the guys you highlighted. Yeah he'll try to get by you but Dylan Junell did a really nice job of just staying look played the ball perfectly and got that right paw in and knocked it away. Taylor Grimes will run by you but this is a really nice job on the defensive back of getting up there and making a play. Usually Buck Grimes is a guy that lulls you to sleep with yeah. hitch routes out routes and then hits you long. They go long to him to begin. They want to soften them up some and see if they can attack him. So on third down and long Scott goes underneath and he hits his back Cooper but he's upended by Cameron Broussard the safety and it's fourth down. Yeah really good job by this defense of Sacramento of not allowing this play to happen. Lindsey Scott has all the time in the world but Cameron Broussard always in coverage right there. Nice play. They had some busted coverages last week in the first half. Didn't see it in this particular drive. Well how about that a, a three and out we talked about the blur that these offenses are going to be of course we got three and out. Marcus Fulcher back to return the kick. And it takes an incarnate word bounce and Fulcher shedding a tackle and he's got a herd of Cardinals with him at the 20 yard line. Who emerges from that pack of Hornets as the quarterback you know it's going to be uh, either Jake Dunaway or Astro Hera and again the starter doesn't really matter because both guys will play. Yeah I think you'll see both guys and it really is just a feel of the game for, for coach Troy Taylor. He said hey I don't really have a, a script for the first 15 I have it from a field perspective and it looks like Dunaway is going to be the guy to get the start. And so Dunaway the passing option of the two quarterbacks. And through the rain last week he had his first 300 yard passing game that seemed contradictory to what it looked like in Sacramento. And the Hornets with their first touch on offense and he threads it into a tight window and a strong gain on first down they get eight and Dunaway in there to sling it and he does. Yeah he's going to throw the ball well last two weeks he struggled with turnovers four interceptions one touchdown they want to get going quickly. And goes out to the edge with Parker Clayton on the screen and he's got a first down. So he hits Gibson on first down Clayton on second and they move the chains. Yeah they're going to keep this ball moving and I think the key for them is they won't go as fast but they will go a little bit of tempo. Yeah, quick to the line be a fast talking night won't it. And done away three straight throws to begin the day and back shoulder incomplete. There's a flag out from Jarrett Gibson. Yeah. Was tangled up there with Brian Mays, the field side corner. Brian Mays never turned his head back. And when you do that, generally you're going to get this pass interference. Pass interference. Defense number 12. 15 yards. Automatic first down. Yeah, when you play this, you have to play it well. He's good there, but never turns to really look and just pushes them away. That's going to be a penalty almost every single time. And that's a very similar route to the one that Brian Mays had his interception on last week. He turned and made a great interception last week. And it gets called for the penalty so plus territory for the Hornets on their first drive. 
And then Dunaway, known as the passing quarterback, using his legs. And he's clipped out in open space after a gain of 15. Yeah, you think an Ash O'Hara, but Dunaway sees that because of opening in the field, and he's able to get down there. And they're going to keep going with a little tempo. Now what could have been of Caleb Culp, who didn't get the legs? So with that tempo, Dunaway to the sideline. That's intercepted. Brandon Richard over the top with the takeaway. I told you, he has turned the ball over too much the last few weeks. They haven't gotten, point, gotten points off turnovers, but he has got to protect the football better than that. Brandon Richards with a great play on that interception. Well, the cornerback turned linebacker looked like he reconverted to get his first pick of the year. Almost looked like he baited him into throwing it, but he was right there on the coverage. Done away with it a little bit late, and then he turns into an offensive player. See how he's kind of baiting him right there? Okay, if you throw this, I'm going to get this interception. He wanted Carlos Hill, but Hill couldn't get to the ball where Brandon Richard was right there. So Sacramento State was moving it and after the three and out and Carter Bird back on the field and incomplete looking for Taylor Grimes again and it was Gavin Davis Smith up making the play from safety. This defense has held quarterbacks to under 60 percent completion percentage 15 straight games. Now you got a guy with 72 percent. Let's see if he can outdo that. That's going to be a big ask tonight. Yeah. But incomplete. For Scott. On uh, his first play of this drive, and they bang it back between the tackles and only got one with Ariel Nagata around the edge, tucking in there to get Cooper. Yeah, him and Armand Bailey just flying up there to make the stop. They're going to do that a lot. They're going to be tough to sub defensively. Doesn't matter, though. And it's Jeff. spotted out there by Jet Stanley, and it's fourth down. He got that paw up and did a nice job of knocking the ball down. Had one PBU coming into the name. Pass breakup. That's his second one. Defensive lineman, look at the eyes of the quarterback. If they can't get to him, get that hand up, knock it down. So defense, yeah, a, we, a we turnover and two three and outs. Let's go. <laughs> we talked all offense, but both of these defenses, and again, no points off turnovers. So Nguyen, the punter, out for the second time. Hasn't been used much this year because of how Incarnate Works moved the ball. And Fulcher takes the one hop. And he's taken down inside the 20 yard line. No points yet on a night where we thought we might see 80, but it's only three minutes in. Surely we'll get our points soon. We're averaging a possession a minute to start this game. Three possessions, three minutes in. Conrad and Charles Arbuckle. But one of the national backdrops of this game, not only a trip to the Final Four, but coaching movement. KJ Kinney, GG Chief J. Kinney is going to Texas State. And uh, Troy Taylor reported yesterday, Pete Thamel, that he is a lead candidate for the Stanford job. Yeah, some interesting developments off the field for this game. So Asher O'Hara is in at quarterback, and Marcus Fulcher gets eight on first down. Yeah, GJ Kinney has been balancing time this week between getting a recruiting class together, yeah. doing administrative meetings at Texas State, and also coaching his team in the playoffs. Yeah, it's, it's a big ask for a coach, but the players also involved, and you can see here, it hadn't affected Sacramento State much. When Scatterboat Boot is out there running the football, the thing is, this news is new, and you can see a new quarterback, Ash O'Hara, new for the Sacramento State team, so they're dealing with it just like the Incarnate Word guys are. The Incarnate Word it survived their game last week with that news still fresh. Fresh news for Sacramento State yesterday. Astro O'Hara rips through on first down, and the running quarterback doing what he does best for a first down. The first thing I said with the coaches is he was slippery, and you saw that right there. They said he's flexible, almost like plastic man. He can get by guys quickly and make the first person miss, and he's going to get by you. Right here, watch this move. Boom, I'm gone. And then he's down the field for a big game. And right back on the ground with Fulcher. So eight more yards grinding out running yards on this drive already. It almost looked like a jab, jab, jab for Troy Taylor and his offensive staff. Now they're coming with some haymakers. And with both backs in there at Scadaboo running between the tackles. And he's got the first down. We showed you the coaches. Uh, G.J. Kinney is going on to Texas State. Uh, Troy Taylor reported by Pete yeah. Thamel of ESPN yesterday, the lead candidate for the job at Stanford. He said no matter what, 
I'm going to coach this team throughout the playoffs no matter what comes of that. Yeah. Well, off the play fake. O'Hara throwing for the first time. And he's got Fulcher with a flag out. And he's twisted down at the 30. We'll check on the marker. Yeah, it looks like it might be against Pierre Williams, who was out there on the side. Probably held, it, held up one of the defenders before that play actually took place. I mean, Ash O'Hara can throw the football as well. Owning 84 of the offense, yeah. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, remains first down. Sometimes on slow developing plays for receivers, they're, they're used to blocking, but when they have to wait that long, it just becomes a situation. Watch here, he's blocking and then he gets beat and he's not able to hold on. The flag had already come out on 84, and then you could have had it on uh, number eight as well, Jared Gibson, but it was on 84. He was holding because his defender got by him. If one official wasn't getting him, the <laughs> second and the third was about to get him. Somebody was going to get him. So back it up to first and 16. And here's Elijah Tal Tolliver into the second level. And he gets all that penalty yardage back, then some to move the chain. Yeah, bad angle by Caleb Cup. Watch 20 coming downhill, but he takes the wrong gap. And then look at the run and the effective finish by Tal Tolliver. He had the big play in the kick game last week, opening up the second half. Here's O'Hara on the move again. He's got it complete to his tight end, Marshall Martin. And this drive is moving through the air and on the ground. Yeah, Martin is one of the guys we talked about, said fastest on the team by GPS. And this is a big tight end. He's a little undersized, but he makes catches and yards after catch when he makes a play. Oh, you being a former tight end, you love the film for Sacramento yeah. State and how much they use the tight well, end. Well, he's a matchup problem. He had a huge game last week, 10 catches, 146 yards, two touchdowns. But he's a guy that's made plays all year long, 10 touchdowns on the year. Yeah, those were both career bests for Martin in a career that's seen him break some records at Sacramento State. Off of the pole, it's O'Hara going over the top for a touchdown. Asher flip, no. Asher leap. Yes, sir. Touchdown. When they get in the low red zone, this is what's effective. 20 times he's done this. He's able to use this effectiveness and make a play. Yeah, watch. He's going to move these guys over, and he sees at the end, goes down really hard. Chris Whitaker, and then he's going over the top. He takes two defenders because of the play fake. Watch the play fake and watch six. When he sees that opening, he's outside. He's gone. And then, oh, I'm a fly. I can get in. Touchdown. So ruled a touchdown on the field. There was a thought that it was going to be marked down at the one, but it ruled a touchdown. So remember, hands on the ground, fine. If it's above the hand, if it's on the field is under further review. Forearm or any part of the arm, he is down. So they're going to take a look at this. It looked like it could have been mid arm, maybe elbow that came down inside the one here. So they'll take a look at it. Yeah, it, it's one of those situations when he goes over the top. Is he able to get in with the ball? Arm might go down. Yeah. So his elbow's down, but where's yeah. the ball? That's the key. And they're going to have a bunch of different looks. Does the ball cross the plane? So it's right there. I don't know what your feel is. I, I yeah. think he's down think, at the one yeah, yard line. I think line. he's down at the one yard line. That's going to come back. But it's a great effort <laughs> that this guy makes. So it looked like Caleb Culp just kept him out of the end zone. After video review, it was ruled the runner's knee was down at the half yard line. First down, second middle state, first and goal. So what looked like a nine play, 81 yard touchdown drive and 253 will extend for at least one more play. But the rhythm of this drive starts to show you that Sacramento State looks like they're back in it and playing well. Asher O'Hare, a little upset he didn't get number 20. But these guys do a good job of rotating with each other. Well, you've seen the video, you've seen the photo, right? Earlier yeah. in the season, he cartwheels over two guys yeah. and into the end zone. Well, his ability to play fake and then also see the edge is what gets him in a lot of times. 
So it's Jake Dunaway back in at quarterback. And Scadaboo basically playing fullback is in for six. Yeah, and they're able to move that interior offense defensive line, and he's able to go in easily for a touchdown. Carnet Ward has to now figure out how to do, how to stop this offense, because this offense can get going as well. Look on the interior. Those green jerseys just putting everybody away, and that's probably one of the easiest touchdowns Scatterboot can make in his life. Watch big Charles Pierre in the middle, zero. They move him to the side by his technique, and he's able to get in for six. And Charles Pierre is 375 pounds. That's not easy to do. Not a little man. So not a little man could not touch Cam Scadaboo, and it's seven zip Hornets in the first quarter. You're watching the NCAA Division I FCS quarterfinals from Sacramento State, and the Hornets just took a seven zip lead on a Cam Scadaboo one yard touchdown fullback dive. Connor Onion, Charles Arbuckle. And this, no matter how this goes tonight, is already the best season in Sacramento State history, but they're looking for more in their first national title. They really are. They are a school that has finally started to smell some success, and I think they understand what's in front of them now. And so their third consecutive season playing where they've won the Big Sky title that's led to national seeds before, but it wasn't until last week where they finally won a playoff game and broke through through the rain against Richmond. Got behind and then came storming back against a really solid Richmond team. A short kick is muffed and trouble for Wilson too. And the coverage unit up to hem him out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Yeah, it looked like nobody wanted that hot potato. And then finally Cole Wilson was able to pick it up. A lot of movement with the football. Let's see now. Incarnate work has to get some things going because it looks like now Sac State has settled in on offense. Back-to-back uh, -back three and outs, even after a turnover that Incarnate Word forced. And then Cam Scadaboo marching down the field, 81 yards on the scoring drive. Cap it off for the first touchdown of the night. So no first downs yet for the record-setting Lindsey Scott. And he gets it out to Grimes, who puts a stiff arm on Mather. And a good beginning to this drive, getting five yards. It's hard to go fast when you're not getting first downs or when you have incompletions. They've got to stack a few of these first downs to get comfortable on the road. And on the ground, Marcus Cooper off a tackle, and he's got that first first down of the night for the Cardinals. Yeah, offensive line really coming off the ball on that one and really creating a big lane for him to run through to pick up that first down. With that speed, Sacramento State scrambling to line up. And another shot. Jump ball for Chafin is broken up. The all-conference cornerback, Caleb Nelson, recovered on it. Yeah, he played that really well. You know you're going to get tested by this offense. But Caleb Nelson, watch him here. Doesn't panic, goes up and just knocks the ball away. Goes to the hands, knocks the ball away. Good defensive play by Caleb Nelson. Father played here at Sacramento State, so I'm sure he's happy with how his son played on that one. And he came back home closer to his family after he was at North Dakota. He joined Sacramento State this year. And the pocket collapses on Lindsey Scott. And he's stormed down. Nagata, the first to touch him. And the edge rusher gets the sack. Nagata, Stanley, a bunch of guys get there. This offensive line has done a pretty good job. But that time, nice play by the Sac State defense. Look at him. Interior game, nothing really fancy, but just getting to him when he's trying to step up in the pocket. They said they're going to keep an eye on him with Armand Bailey, but if your four can get to him, that's where you get happy as a defensive coordinator. And that was just straight pushing yeah. the tackle yeah. upfield, right? It just knocked him out of the way and got to Lindsey Scott Jr. So third down and 16 after two punts already for this Cardinals offense. And Scott. Still behind the line of scrimmage and throws a bullet complete. And they've got another first down. Underneath, he goes to Jalen Campbell, and they get 30 on third and 16. Dylan Janell almost had an interception here. We may not see it, but he had a chance at that football. And really nice job by Lindsey Scott of coming back and throwing that ball out. They go right back underneath after the first down, and C.J. Hardy gets seven. They were backed up against the wall. He finds a way to get one, and that might have been the spark for this offense. Uh, starting to feel that heartbeat tick up a little bit. Well, basically the same play, and Hardy 
more positive yards first down. Mac Leftwich, the offensive coordinator, who's a rising star, probably just says, hey, if, it's, if they're not going to cover it, let me keep going to it. They get out wide, so they stretch you out, and you have to defend the whole field. And you figure that C.J. Hardy is going to get some more touches tonight. Brandon Porter is out with injury. One of their top targets. Scott in and out of the pocket. And using his legs to tuck down at the 30. See, they want to force him out. But that time, 30, Armand Bailey got caught in the wash, and he couldn't get to him, and that allowed him to pick up some yards. We talk about a spy, but you have to be selective on how you do it. If you go back to the field, it's harder to cover him, and he knows that as a quarterback. And can take you out of some coverage yeah, too, right? Exactly. Because they know they stretch you out with how they're look at how far out their receivers are, are lined up. Yeah, basically two guys straddling the numbers, and they run away from that strength with Cooper. Uh, he's close to the first down, marking two yards short. If you think about the Baylor Bears and Art Browse, he would do that and spread you really wide. His guys would be dead, meaning they wouldn't do much. These guys aren't dead. They get going and make plays on the outside. Like uh, that. Pulled out of there from Scott. Yep, right outside the numbers. And they get the first down out to Chafin. And right. the drive continues. Remember, Andy Thompson, the defensive coordinator, talked about it. He said, we see it from our guys, but it's not the same when you get here on game day. You've got to cover it and make sure you stop the run. But number one is key at putting you off of your game. And hard to practice at that pace is what the Sacramento State staff talked about yesterday. Off a little fake to the sideline for Cooper for a touchdown. This happens because you've got two men route and you've got a low player in defense and a high player. You split those guys and able to hit Cooper on the outside who's an effective weapon in the receiving game. He beat Abel Ordaz to that pylon and now we're getting that NASCAR yeah. pace we expected. I got my running shoes back now. I think we're ready for it. Stick around. These guys are going to score a lot of points. What were those first two drives? You had your clogs on or what? Yeah, I think I did. I had the rain boots. That was uh, that was packing for last week. Yeah, I, thought I had my cowboy here. boots next. Now I got my running shoes on. <laughs> so touchdown to Cooper after a third and 16 incarnate word cashes it in, moving the ball down the field. Oh, yeah. Fast is what you want to go, but you want to score when you go fast. So Lindsey Scott already broke the touchdowns responsible for record in the FCS last week. He gets his first tonight to Marcus Cooper. Watch Marcus Cooper acting job here. He's going to go out in motion. You've had a play that's worked for you with the outside receiver. He acts like he's going to block for a screen. Boom. I'm gone by you. Two guys on one. A matchup problem right there. Really nice play design. That's a little wrinkle that they probably didn't see in film study. Marcus Cooper, the beneficiary of it. So you're saying he's got to take this trip to NorCal, maybe go down the coast a little bit, yeah. go to Culver City? He might, he might, he might have a little acting in his career. The oh. kick goes out of bounds. Not a good one. After the touchdown for Incarnate Word, it'll be good field position for the Sacramento State offense. Yeah. And their last drive, they marched for their first score. Oh, man, they were able to run the ball effectively with Asher to start. O'Hara and then you had the running game with Tal Tolliver and then getting the big tight end involved but Ash O'Hara didn't get the touchdown here but Scadaboo does that was a really nice drive by Sac State let's see if they can answer the touchdown that we just saw from Incarnate Ward that's one for O'Hara that he keeps on his highlight tape like it was a touchdown. Oh, man. I'm, hey, that was a, a, a beautiful run and a try to get into the end zone. Sometimes you don't want guys jumping, but he's been known to do that. Now, higher than that. We mentioned the oh, one yeah. against Idaho earlier in the year. So it's O'Hara who almost had a touchdown last drive out there to take the first snap of this drive at quarterback and runs the option off the fake pitch. It's taken down by Anya Lebecci. The best defender in the South and the defensive player of the year. We hadn't called his name much, but he's always around the football. He makes plays. He's powerful and explosive. And that was a nice tackle right there on a guy that's slippery. He was able to corral him. You talked plus one, plus two. You go mano y mano with those guys tonight. It's going to be fun. Anya Lavecchi against O'Hara. Yeah, he's going to find a way to make the tackles every single play if he can. O'Hara for Scadaboo. And Andy Lebecci on the back of the pile there. Back-to-back one-yard plays. 
Oh. And Charles Pierre in with a herd of Cardinals with Sam Latham at the bottom. Yeah, Olivier Charles Pierre was right there. Big zero who's a one technique or zero technique, but big guy can play. He even he tells you I'm a zero technique. I'm a line up on the center and if the center can't block me, I'm gonna make it hard for him. <laughs> As you said in our meetings this week, you're not going to see him in a four eye technique. No, 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 no. If it is, there's something wrong. Either he's lined up wrong or he's trying to sneak out there so coach could tell him get your butt back down to at least a three or the or the zero. His, his number gives away his technique. <laughs> Big number zero for Incarnate Word. Dunaway at quarterback, and that's incomplete. And Martin with a flag out. Oh, he had coverage over the middle from Sean Holton. And the flag comes flying. Might continue this drive. Matchup problem for a safety or a cornerback or a linebacker. Doesn't matter. Talked about him being the fastest guy. All the DBs and wide receivers think they're faster, but the GPS says he's the fastest on the team. Pass interference. Defense number 23. Ball be placed at the spot of the five. Automatic first down. And the thing is, most guys look at 16 in the slot. He's getting held right there, and you got to let go at some point, and then he grabs him again. So it's an easy call. But they know when you watch film, you say 16. I got to stop you. Well, you have to let him go and then stop it. And convicted twice. With the flag out, uh, Sean Holt, one of the best cover guys for the Cardinals. Uh, leads them in picks, but drive continues on the flag out. And Dunaway into a tight window again. He gets Williams. And a strong gain on first down. They get eight. Yeah, now Dunaway is looking a little more comfortable in finding receivers in those open areas. If the zone, they sit down, he just gets it to them really quickly. They do a good job of this. Troy Taylor designed his offense where if, wherever anybody vacates, you have a receiver going there and turn the numbers easier catch. And he can do it with both guys. Astro O'Hara coming back in for Troy Taylor. And Dunaway coming to the sideline. Astro O'Hara threw the game winning touchdown last week, so no problem for him in the pass game, but he gets you an element in the run game. And here is the running quarterback throwing it, and he goes underneath to Martin again. And he slips a couple of tackles and bullies his way for a first down with a flag out again, right behind where the first down hit for Marshall Martin. Yeah, Marshall Martin will make the first guy miss, and then he's just able to pick up yards after that. Interested to see what this penalty flag is going to be. Looks like it may be against Sac State. And down right at the 40 yard line. It's about where Martin went down. Block in the back. Offense number 84. 10 yards yeah. to the spot of the foul. Yeah. Second down. Pierre Williams again. You know, this has happened to him earlier where it was a holding call. This time it's going to be a block in the back. All you do is just let him go. But he's blocking him in the back right there, and you can't do that. Brandon Richard was the guy that got around him the last time, and he held. This time he blocked him in the back. Because of positioning there and also because of who's carrying the ball, you let him go? No. Yeah, you let him go because you don't have a chance. If you hit him in the back, that's going to run that thing all the way back. So back it up to second and seven and right to Williams and a flag is out the other way this time. Brian Mays on the coverage and Pierre Williams is trying to get free. Brian Mays is a long lean guy at 6'1", 183, but he looks a lot longer. But that again, you got to turn around and make a play and Pierre Williams gets the penalty yards back. Pass interference, defense, number 12, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Never lets go, never plays the ball. Now you could say Pierre Williams, but Brandon Richard never played the ball. And when Pierre Williams is trying to work back, he just holds on, doesn't let go. So the scorecard on penalties is Brian Mays two, Pierre Williams two. And here's Fulcher. He's got a seam into the second level with power. And Fulcher, one guy to beat is gone. Safety has to make this play. Marcus Fulcher with a really nice run. That offensive line blocking, but there's one guy he has to beat. Caleb Culp doesn't make the play, and he goes to the house. Well, did you see what he did at the end of it, too? <laughs> Somebody tried to give him a beer. <laughs> hey, he's not ready for the beer right now. He doesn't want to celebrate quite like that. 
He said, wait a minute, this is for post game. And that curls in, but Sacramento State goes back up a touchdown. So Marcus Fulcher from 35 yards out. Yeah, and then celebrated. Your, your last line of defense, watch 20 Caleb Cup coming downhill and nice move and run by Fulcher. The blocking out front. Look at those guys all protecting. But that open hole, he goes right there. Watering hole. Watering <laughs> hole. Watering hole. Nope. Ooh, I, oh, I, I, I think he got some. <laughs> he's taking beer. He's taking everything. I don't know if you can do that, but he did it. <laughs> and no flag came out, so it's it's all fair. He knew right where to go to. Also, I think he had been talking to them before the game and knew where the celebration was taking place. Less than a pint consumes. Well, I'll say this. You got to make sure they're even talking about it on the sideline. But you got to make sure when he's in open field or scatterboo that you secure the tackle because they will run through you and over you. Another rolling kick. And no chance for Wilson and the kick coverage team for Sacramento State. A third time rallying down there. Yeah, man, they, they get after it. A 2 3 and outs began this night for Incarnate Word. They converted third and 16 and then looked unstoppable. Well, this is a huge play by Lindsey Scott Jr. Look at him throwing and stopping and throwing for 23 defenders. And then another nice run and a pickup right there. And this touchdown with a fake down low. And Cooper with the six. So last week a record went down. He's got more records to fall. Willie Totten, who he just tied, he broke the all purpose touchdown record of Totten in a single season last week. I don't think we're done. Nope, still the first quarter. <laughs> and Scott is down after three yards on first down. Uh, Willie Totten, who he broke. The record of last week, that was Jerry Rice's quarterback oh, in Mississippi yeah. Valley State. And he could spin it. And quickly back to the line. And Marcus Cooper burrowing his way to the 30. And it's third and short. Yeah, Marcus Cooper is a guy that looks like he gets better as the game goes along. Played all offensive plays last week. Didn't miss a beat. But he gets more and more comfortable as the game goes. And 96 snaps last week for Cooper and still running strong on a short week. Look at the how he just glides through there and then when he sees the hole he hits it. That's why they really like him. They say he gets small in between those crevices and it comes out on the other side. 5'8", 185. But he's run stronger he than does. that. Yeah. That's what's amazing about how many snaps he played last week. Not getting subbed out at all. That's incomplete for Chapin. Caleb Nelson with another nice play. He's just crafty. You think you got him beat. He just reaches his hand in there and knocks that ball out. It's really they've contained these big time receivers. They've had to do some different things to stop this offense. But the receivers that we were expecting aren't making the huge plays like we thought. And that's a great matchup. Nelson yeah. against Chafe, the best against best right oh, there. Man. That's what you want. This time of year in the playoffs, you want to see the best guy. And you want to battle the best guy. A 42nd play total in this first quarter and it's third and short Cooper getting eight yards that offensive line has really played well this year and this is why they do it they give Marcus Cooper some running lanes and then when he's able to get through there he meets with them on pass pro he understands it as well as anybody but he, they really like to make holes for Marcus Cooper now spending that extra time that'll get you some points with your offensive lineman. He gets to run behind those big guys and he's pushed forward for the first down. Roger McCuller, the three back had a really nice block on this coming back from motion one side going the other side had a real huge block on that play. Andy Thompson talked to us about this. We got to stop this offense. And a four straight third downs converted. Now a shot play on first down and incomplete. Patrick Dean challenged by Grimes up the sideline. And Dean makes the play. These DBs are running with him. There's nobody running down the field wide open. They've had to scheme it a little bit, but look at Patrick Dean, step for step. And then when he gets that head around, just makes the play. What you do as a DB, when they reach that hand out, you got to go and play on the ball. And Patrick Dean does a nice job with that right hand. 
and it just barely did get that head around. Yeah. A depth tested a little bit for Sacramento State in the secondary. Prince Washington, one of their top corners, did not play last week. Scott can't get out of pressure. Armand, no, that wasn't Armand Bailey. <laughs> Jeremy Harris. Man, he came through that A-gap. Shot out of cannon. Watch 39 through the whole A-gap right there. The double A-gap, but he gets there hard and fast. Offensive lineman doesn't have a chance to get to him. Caleb Johnson, 74, looks late, and he's not able to get there. Really nice play by Jeremy Harris. They're going to start calling him playoff Jeremy. <laughs> Had no sacks in the regular season. Now he's got two in the playoffs. Can we get a breath now? Can we take our breath right now? <laughs> Uh, they eased us into it with the slow start on offense, but starting to buzz a little bit at Hornet Stadium and a high flying first half as we expected the semifinals waiting the winner in Carnet Word in Sac State. One quarter gone in our quarterfinals Sacramento State couple rushing touchdowns and Carnet Word is the seventh seed all chalk last week chalk to start the quarterfinals with North Dakota State beating Samford earlier tonight have only been held out of the semis one time since 2010 and the winner gets the bison third and 21 to start the second quarter and Lindsey Scott with a leaping catch made over the middle but a long way to go and Sacramento State rallies after the 17 yard gain Armand Bailey with the crack oh man that was a huge hit right there but it puts them in position to go for third, go for it on fourth down. I said if they got past the 40, the 50 yard line, 45, that was a huge hit. Amapu also laid the hammer. And Mapu the first in there, Bailey ready to plan him if he got there. Fourth down. And underneath, C.J. Hardy has the first down. Yeah, this is huge for them because, again, remember, they went third and long in the last drive. They got it going. This time, they're 63% on the year on fourth down. Big pickup by Incarnate Ward. And Grimes hustling back to the line, and he gets the ball after hustling back downfield. And Caleb, Caleb Nelson. Nelson. No <laughs> we, chance on that play. We said it right away. He made, gave up one yard, but he fought through the. This is how you fight through a block and then go make a tackle on the outside. Talk about tackling in space. That was really nice by Caleb Nelson. So getting around the block, and here's Chafin who's looking to throw, and Cooper makes the catch. So they go screen, apparently, yep. and then Chafin throws it for a first down to Cooper. Go, low, go to Chafin on the lateral, and he throws it behind Cooper, but a nice catch. Lateral there, and you can see the pass set up. Cooper with good hands going back and grabbing that. And back quickly again with Grimes, and he gets halfway to the first down. As a defender, this is just pace, pace, pace. We talked about what would you do. Your, your calls have to be succinct. You can't get substitution. Now you can because they're substituting. But there's a lot of one word things and you hope it's not a, a bad word one word but it's words that you can tell guys this right here when they substitute you're able to substitute and slow down a little bit but Andy Thompson talked about it we've got to be really quick with our calls which bad word came to mind <laughs> all of them <laughs> got a big vocabulary I know it there's Scott uh, hesitated on the run now takes up toward the goal line and Scott says he's in, still waiting for the call. This is how the quarterback can beat you. We see it with Asher O'Hara on the other side. Scott saw that, hesitated, and that allowed him to almost get in. He doesn't quite get into the end zone. I think his elbow is going to go down right before he gets the ball over. But he may have got the ball over the line. Uh, linesman yeah. and line judge came, came together in, in middle of the field and then eventually ruled down. The previous play that the runner was short of the goal line is under further video review. Yeah, there's a player down. So did he get across the plane before? And his arm is over. No knee was down. So maybe some patchwork. They, yeah. they ruled him down. But you have to have indisputable video evidence to overturn it. From the naked eye, I thought he got the ball over the plane and then the elbow down. But it's hard to tell from that angle. 
Right, if you, you get that freeze frame right there, it almost yeah. looks like hand and elbow are on the goal line, mm -hmm. and the nose of the ball breaks that plane. But again, they're going to have to have everything to go. It, it, right away, it looked like it from up here. It was Abel or Daz that was in at the end of that play. He came off injured. And you're starting to see a lot of guys have to play because of the pace of the game. We knew that was going to happen. Sac State said it, incarnate word. Both of these offenses like to be an 80 and above of the plays that they run, but that makes it challenging for your defense. And that's what both coaches have done a masterful job of this year is having yeah. that feel of when to go off yeah. the throttle a little bit to save your defense. Yeah, and not. After beating your review, it is determined the runner was short of the goal line at stand. First down, increment word. Yep, not quite enough to overturn it, but look how close that ball is to the end zone. You can't get any closer than that. Yeah, that's millimeters maybe. <laughs> we need a little card to come out to see if it's right there. Oh, oh don't give me flashbacks <laughs> to that. The measurement. <laughs> Scott empties it out, and now he's got the rushing touchdown. Confirm it, touchdown, Lindsey Scott. Delay to play, but now in. Yeah, Lindsey Scott on that drive was really, really good, and you could see why he's a Walter Payton Award, Award finalist. They're going to open up a hole in the air, interior. He sees it, good blocking up front. White jerseys just come off and make it easy for him. They're trying to overload, but that offensive line does a nice job of just pushing that pile back, making it easy for Lindsey Scott Jr. So he extends his single season FCS record, his 64th total touchdown. And it, that's a lot of scoring. So Lindsey Scott, year seven, trying to cap it with a national championship, just tied the score. Snap your fingers to yourself. You eat funny. <laughs> You're doing all by it. yourself. <laughs> Lindsey Scott, he is uh, in year seven. Mentioned that going to break. 2016, when he started at LSU, you, you think about what was going on there. LSU still had Les Miles as their quarterback. The year Lamar Jackson won the Heisman. Obviously, a ton has happened, but he's figured it out after seven years. Yeah, and when he got here, they were really happy with his development and what he could do. And he's a really he's a grad student, so it's not as heavy of a load, and he's able to really focus on finishing classes, but also football. So after his second touchdown of the night, his first rushing, and Tal Tolliver takes a pop just outside the 20 yard line. So it's Sacramento State coming back out on offense and a tie score. Yeah, it's gonna be how do they respond to that? I think this this is going to be a big time opportunity for Sac State, but there's some hitting going on here. Watch Tal Tolliver slows down just a little bit and gets walloped. Uh, Devon Houston. Houston, we have a problem. I'm sorry, Tyrese Brown the uh, other way. Well, Brown got him down. <laughs> so whichever one you <laughs> want you me go. to say. There you go. <laughs> You recovered with a rhyme either way. So it's Dunaway is starting this drive at quarterback for Sacramento State, and he gets it off, but incomplete. Had pressure in his yeah. face. Yeah, too much pressure on him. He couldn't get the ball off, and I think that's the one thing. This defense had a chance to – Stephen Parker, uh, who's the emotional leader, look at him on his side coming off. He was talking before the game. He's probably talking right now, but he was able to get around the edge. And you talked about the transfer from Kansas with a really nice play there on Dunaway. You mentioned how he was talking. He will tell you, as his teammate, if you're not doing enough. Yes. And then he backs it up with plays like that. He's been playing at a high level this year. O'Hara's back in at quarterback. It's Fulcher, who's chased down. And there's the Southland Player of the Year on defense again, Anya Lebecci. Anya Lebecci is always around the football, but what he does is I like how he gets in position and then he finishes. You don't normally see guys run out of his grasp. And sometimes what he'll do is he'll overrun the play instinctively because so, he knows he has other people coming to help him. Plays on that outside shoulder of the running back, 
sometimes he'll make the tackle, but a lot of times he turns it back in to everybody else. And he still swallows up tackles even playing like that. Oh, yeah. He's just an instinctive guy. Sacramento State has not had a third down yet in this game. And they've got Dunaway at quarterback. And he goes over the middle and just short of the sticks. And has it complete for nine yards to Martin. Yeah, and a decision on fourth down now. He's a guy that makes a lot of plays on third down. I think they're going to go for it. It's so short. And the way they run the football, Scadaboo will come out. They'll, they'll, they'll run this. You played tight end. Should that go to the sticks there on that route? Well, it should, but I think he caught the ball where he could. He had to be a little friendly and make the catch. So sometimes you want to get to the stick, but you got to secure the catch and then get over the line. Friendly meaning work back. Work back to the quarterback. And we'll take a look at this. Yeah, that, that gives him a that gives them a chance to see what they want to do on defense for this fourth down play. Doesn't it feel like there should be an exception made when these teams play that you should get six timeouts a half? <laughs> well, both of these teams, I, I agree with you, but both of these teams are really good in fourth down efficiency. One is 63%, the other one 61%. And they're not afraid to go for it. No, we were talking to G.J. Kinney, the Incarnate Word head coach this week, and we were like, what's, what's your range for your kicker? Where, where can we expect you to send out your kicker? And he was like, Ah, uh, I don't know. I like to go for it on fourth yeah. down. <laughs> it's his defense trying to get the ball back. And after that timeout, offense still on the field for Sacramento State in their own territory. And Incarnate Words trying to sub here. And now the ready for play whistle. And off the play fake, they get it out to the edge to Martin. And Asher O'Hara on the move keeps the drive alive. Yeah, Martin is the guy that you want to go to. Asher O'Hara will work outside, and then he just finds Martin right in that little area that only he's going to catch it and then turns up the field, and he's aggressive. Talk about yards after catch. He's going to run over somebody. Yeah, Incarnate Word was not ready even after that timeout. Sacramento State, when they ready for play, they were able to go. How does that happen out of yeah, a timeout? I, I don't know. Reaction to the personnel? That I think so. They had the, they thought they had the wrong people on, and some guys were going to run off, and they didn't need to. Sam Latham was a little confused. He finally got lined up along with a couple of other guys. O'Hara with pressure to that strong side gets out the opposite way. And off of the pump fake, he has a first down. So he just runs right away from the edge blitz. Caleb Culp was steaming in there. And O'Hara gets the first down in a 20-yard gain. If you come with pressure and you don't get there, he makes you pay. And there's a Sacramento State offensive player down. Can't make out who it is. But, man, Asher O'Hara can see where they're coming from and when it vacates he's able to just get down the field and make a play. It looks like Coleman Kuntz down on the field tight ends for Sacramento State. He was in blocking on that play. And we'll take a timeout with the freshman from here in California down in the field. Uh, two speeches that you want to watch this time of year. The V Foundation Stuart Scott Cancer Research Fund honors Stuart's legacy and awarding grants to scientists uh, addressing the, the racial disparities in, in cancer outcomes in Stuart Scott's name. Uh, if you're able, the v.org slash Stuart uh, to support that fund. After Koontz was down, uh, resume play with eight yard gain to Pierre Williams in Sacramento State. Right back on the march again in the second quarter. Well, when you don't get to the quarterback with pressure, then you're able to pick up a big gain. Asher O'Hara is able to make him pay, and now he stays in to give this offense another spark on this drive. A perfect five of five start. He's also run for 50 yards. And Scadaboo hitting the edge, and that shoulder down. And that's what Coach Taylor was talking about when he said that he collapses people. First down. <laughs> He makes people pay when they come up. And, and this crowd, you can even hear him like, ooh, because he'll run the ball and then he'll finish the run. 
This is what you see. You'll see him looking them up and then make a play. And then, okay, you want some too? All right, how, 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 come on, keep coming. <laughs> Uh, not a fun ride there for Preston Harris. Oh, and he's doing it again. Just shoving guys out of the way for an eight-yard gain. Oh, yeah. If you come up and hit Scadaboo, you better be ready because he's going to pack a punch. Watch this run downhill. You talk about running downhill. Are you ready for it? No, I don't think you're ready for it, dog. You better bring some more with you. Scadaboo is a tough guy to bring down. And they fake it to him. O'Hara out of the back door looking for the corner. And he's angled out to the five. The first thing I said when I watched him on tape is he's slippery. But it all is set up by Scadaboo really running the football effectively and then allowing him to fake to Scadaboo and get out on the other side. Uh, can't slip out of that tackle. Andy Lebecci straight up the middle. Missile there. Yeah, he said, I'm tired of this. <laughs> Let's get you down. Uh, he's doing all this running all the way from me, and he's just going to come. Look at him. He's right there, and he's able to come straight downhill and make a play. That's recognition, flow, feel, and finish by a linebacker at its best. And not even fully into position yet. No, he didn't have to be because he knows from game study where that ball is supposed to hit. He said, look, I'm tired of Astro here and Scadaboo making my guys look bad. Come on, I got you, dog. Well, you're talking about how Anya Lebecci flows tackles to other guys, maybe tired of letting other guys <laughs> get run over. Timeout. Second middle state. First charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout in length. So about midway through this second quarter, this is just about what we expected outside yeah. of those three minutes. Offense is going up and down. Look like they were kind of filling each other out, but now I think these offenses are settling in. Well, you've got the best season in school history on both sidelines tonight. You know, what G.J. Kinney has done in his first year following up with the staff that departed for Washington State did is uh, is incredible how quickly they've been able to sustain that. It really is. And I, I think understanding how to get in that area and recruit. He came from Tulsa, so he knows the Texas footprint. But I think also to just really effectively finding kids and getting guys in. Lindsey Scott Jr. is a good example. And then using all of that talent and making plays. They had some transfers that came in. All of those guys that have have really played effectively for this ball club. Uh, four transfers that they brought in that ended up being all Southlands all conference players. So brought in high level players and some of the guys that he's developed after Coach Morris left for Washington State also on that all conference list. Well, second and goal, Dunaway off the reverse. It's Devin Gandy, and Incarnate Word rallies up again. And Richard takes him down. And did get one yard out of it, but it's third and goal now. Yeah, initially I thought this play was going for a lot more yardage, but nice job by Brandon Richard of getting that tackle. And a couple nice plays for Richard. He had the interception on the first drive of the game. Yeah, one guy we haven't called yet is Elliot Davidson. He is a big hitter for the secondary, number two. Excuse me. Yeah, Elliot Davison. Watch him, because he is always around the football, especially in this area in particular. He goes over toward the boundary and in Davison's direction, but a flag out. And he was matched up with Pierre Williams there, but before the snap, flag came out. And play clock was at zero there. False start. Offense, five yards, remain score down. There's also that. <laughs> they were bringing Davison off the edge, and then they had coverage on the back end. They'll do that. They have these guys that they can bring down in the box. Got to come away with points. The way this game is going, both of these teams can score. The only Jake Dunaway has to protect the football here against this defense that likes to take it away. Fulcher motions out and he's got all sorts of space out there but drops the ball. Wow. Fulcher could have walked backwards into the end zone. Sometimes when you're this wide open you lose focus for a second and Fulcher did it right there. And he knows it. The ball's coming right to him. He can get know that he's getting in, but just lets it get in and gets handcuffed. 
Wow. And maybe a little buzzy from earlier after his <laughs> touchdown. I knew you were going there. But the key is making sure you come away with it and make a play and get in the end zone. All right, so the offenses have been stopped officially. Field goal try is good from 30 out for Kyle Sentowski. Let's, let's keep that one in our back of our mind if it comes back to Hanna. Remember the drop. Well, Marcus Fulcher is a really good receiving running back. Don't see this happen a lot. Not a good feeling. And Caleb Culp just looks like he loses them in space and can't figure out where he is. And Marcus Fulcher is so wide open. I've been there. I haven't had many of those. And, and it just oh. eats you. They'll get him back involved. But let's see if it comes back and hurts them in any kind of way. Because that was a huge, easy touchdown for him. Now that look, you felt that, right? Oh, I, yeah. Well, another short kickoff for Sacramento State. And out to the 33 yard line to begin this drive for Incarnate Word. So North Dakota State is already in Montana State playing right now on ESPN2. They've got a big lead in Bozeman. And then tomorrow at uh, 11 Central Time, noon Eastern on ESPN South Dakota State and Holy Cross. So North Dakota State into the semifinals. Every year that has been regular outside of the spring of 2020, North Dakota State has been in the semifinals since 2010. Just say, they expect them to be there, right? Yeah, that's the more concise way to say it. It's better TV on your part than it was <laughs> by me. Uh, Lindsey Scott uh, with a few yards on first down. Incarnate Word, Sacramento State have never been here. They've never been there, meaning the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Somebody's getting there for the first time tonight. Here's Scott around the edge. Eyes always downfield, but throw to the bench. His offensive line did a nice job protecting, but that coverage on the back end was really strong, forcing that third down. And that allowed Killian Roscoe to get to him, shove him out of bounds. Yeah, all you need to do is just make him use the sideline as your friend, and they were able to on that particular play. All bundled up in Northern California. Cool but dry night. Nice change of pace for the home fans after last week. Incarnate Word has been a machine on third down. Four out of the last five, but not here. Cooper is stuffed right up the middle by Tyler Hardiman. Yeah, Tyler Hardiman, the first one there, and then Armand Bailey. Again, when you can get to him in the backfield, that's surefire tackle for loss. Look at Armand Bailey as one, and but Tyler Hardiman beats his man. Reed Francis and is able to get there effectively. Nice play by that defensive front. Well, everywhere you look, you find guys that went to Folsom High School. That's where Troy Taylor used to be the head coach, now Sacramento State's head coach. He had zero guys from Folsom where he used to coach when he got the job in 2019. Now he got 10 guys from his <laughs> former high school. Not a mistake. Well, he knew the talent level there, and he also knew what he was able to build there, building it here. Don't know how much longer he'll be here with all the talk. It'll be interesting to see who would come in as a potential candidate if that happens. Well, how many coordinators would he take with him down the yeah. road to Palo Alto? And again, that was reported yesterday by our Pete Thamel yep. in the middle of the afternoon, right before we met with him, actually. And he said, look, we're going to try to win a national championship. And no matter what, I'm going to be the head coach. And then we'll figure out the future. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Troy Taylor and I played in the East-West Shrine game. I had forgotten that he thrown me the touchdown in that game. We worked all week together. Bruce Snyder was the head coach. And we got to reminiscing. And I said, I thought for John Freeze. He said, no, I did. Oh, you got a photographic memory, man. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, oh, it it's helmet. Man, O'Hara goes down. <laughs> so the helmet is back down for Anya Lebecci, and the flag is down. That that had to be the case if the yeah. helmet's coming off. His helmet's down at the 20-yard line, unless 10 yards a, where he made the play. Unless it was a legal use of the hands to the for him, but he can't make the tackle once his helmet is off. Eight, Look at eight right the there. Play. Therefore, there is no foul for participating without a helmet. Good, good call, but number eight right there coming in. Helmet's going to come off, and it's actually pushed off, and they just let him play in a continuation. I thought generally hands to the head. They can't. He has to go out for a play. 
but it's interesting. Usually they call hands to the face or to the helmet. That didn't get called. He was able to get away, and I think Troy Taylor is upset that he's still able to play through the continuation, which usually they call a penalty or not let him participate. Interesting. Seems, seemed like that should have been a penalty on somebody. <laughs> But instead, no gain, and Fulcher gets his redemption, making the grab, and has a first down, and finishing forward on Caleb Cole. Well, Scadabu does it, and now Fulcher, who was upset with himself for not catching that last ball, but that time he made the play and ran over the defender. Really nice play fake. You get everybody sucked in. Brandon Richards down hard, and then he's able to run over Caleb Cole at the end. And O'Hara slips out of the sack and still trying to get three, and he goes down. This team doesn't give up a lot of sacks, but right there you can see good effort by Thailand George. He gets his first sack of the season coming here in the quarterfinal. With 33 coming in for Angela Becci. Initially, there's pressure, and then you've got to bring three or four guys. I told you he's slippery, but he's not that doggone slippery. I was waiting for you to, to come back with that. You went hot potato earlier. I'm waiting for the bar of soap to come out with the run that he has. Well, it's not all offense for Incarnate Word. They can, they can stop people. And it's done away back in at quarterback. And he takes a shot down the sideline and incomplete. Incomplete. Carlos Hill down there. And Sean Holton got help from Davidson, who you were just talking about. Yeah, a little bit underthrown by Dunaway, though. That allowed Davidson to make that up. He makes a play, doesn't push him and pressure, but gets his hands and turns around and enough to knock the ball away from him. See, if you don't push, pull, or grab, usually they'll let you do that. You can place your hand on the receiver and then make a play when he goes up to get the ball. I'm doing it to you here in the booth. Yeah, you can just push me out the window. <laughs> Third down and 18, Dunaway stands in there and throws an interception. It's Davison who just had the coverage out of a tackle and inside the 30. That's his third interception on the season. And again, Dunaway cannot keep throwing the ball away. It hurts your offense and your defense too much. I hope he's okay, though. It looked like Kendall oh, Riley, his right guard, got pushed right into his yeah. feet. So he throws a pick to Davison, his third of the year. And Dunaway is down for the Hornets. Yeah, his offensive lineman, like you said, is getting pushed back into him. You know, bringing pressure. They brought more than they could block. But he's hit. And he's caught up with his offensive lineman. It was, it, was really, it was really more that he got hit into yeah, his guy yeah. rather than the other way around. He may have rolled over, and they could have called a penalty flag on that for the late hit. Yeah, but number two playing it at, a, at the high safety, and he just goes over. Dunaway throws the ball away. And again, that's been a lot of interceptions over the last few weeks, six in the last three weeks. Jonathan Patkey, the defensive coordinator for Incarnate Word, uh, getting that pressure on Dunaway. Um, I'm Dunaway glad he's being helped up. Yeah, I'm glad he's up. But, but the thing was, that could have been a penalty flag on, I think, Cameron Preston. So Dunaway coming off. After he got hit into his right guard, Kendall Riley. Yeah, the ball's already gone. You're right, that is that is pretty late. Yeah, and that's a late, late one that he's able to get away with. I think it was Cameron Preston. Yeah, it was. It was Preston that, that had the hit late. So an interception and then Dunaway stays down. And now Lindsey Scott and the Cardinals back out there and Cooper. Almost breaks it. Uh, Mapu makes the play after a six yard game. Yeah, now they're going to go fast and attack this defense. Scott out of empty. He's got a lineman eligible, and that's almost intercepted. And yeah. He had an option to throw to the field side with one of his linemen peeking out there. Nash Jones eligible. <laughs> yeah. didn't throw it, to him. It, it didn't go to him and tried to go to Roger McCullough. 
has eight catches on the year threw it a little too hot couldn't get to it now sometimes when you go fast you end up hurting yourself Andy Thompson the defensive coordinator trying to figure out what Mac left which is going to do here well, he's got three hands in the dirt and flags out false start 77 of the offense five yards remains third down I'll say this this defense does a really nice job of battling when they get turnovers I mean they seem to ramp it up the last few weeks they haven't given up a lot of points off turnovers but Andy Thompson said hey look whatever happens we just got to make plays we can't worry about what happened to the offense we've got to be our offense's best friend what do you think he's calling with that thriller like move <laughs> Here's Scott keeping it and dancing his way now powering his way for the first down sweet feet oh, and yeah. strong shoulders to move the chains his lower half when you go down and watch before the, the game you can see why he's able to do that. So inside the red zone Cardinals trying to regain the lead and Cooper snuffed out of there Jet Stanley leading the charge only got one in the play. Yeah, when you, I love to go down on the field before because you can watch guys work. But Lindsey Scott Jr., lower half is, is really strong, and he's not a real tall guy in stature, but has made throws all year long and gotten into his weapons consistently. And inside four minutes to go in this first half. Incarnate Word has not led yet. They've been chasing. Here's Scott into the end zone and broken up. And flag is out. Dylan Junell had the coverage. And then the flag out late with Jalen Campbell, the one he was tangled up with. He got there a little early. Jalen Campbell running the dig route. Defender tried to go through him. Pass interference, defense number 27. The foul occurred in the end zone yep. by rule. The ball be placed at the two yard line. Automatic first down. Now they announced Gavin Davis Smith. Yeah. But that was that was Junell on coverage. It's an easy play to make. Uh, easy call to make, excuse me, if a guy just runs through the receiver on that one. A lot of empty on this drive, and Scott trying to close it, but he is ushered backwards. Well, he's got three Hornets back there. And off the edge, Killian Roscoe, the first to drive him back. Yeah, really good defense right here. I thought for sure they were going to be able to get this in. But this defense built a wall. Roscoe was there first, and Armand Bailey, we just, we might have just said he's going to be there every single play because he was right there in the mix as well. Well, that's what Andy Thompson told us his job is going to be most of the night, right? Spying Scott. Keep an eye on him. Well, back to the edge, touchdown. Roger McCuller gives Incarnate Word their first lead. Doesn't have a lot of catches, but when he does, he seems to be effectively getting into the end zone. Nine catches on the year, three of them now touchdowns. Down here, this is the hardest thing to defend because you just kind of lose that H-back tight end position, and he just sneaks out there and makes the play. So uh, another move up the rankings and the leaderboard. In Division one history with the 57th passing touchdown for Lindsey Scott and he's responsible for all three tonight points off turnovers also they converted that which has been hard six play drive 29 yards it started with the Davison pick and finished with the McCuller touchdown Only a couple of catches in the last month and a half for Roger McCuller, and he scores in a quarterfinal game. And uh, semifinals next week, the NCAA FCS championship continues with semifinal action Friday and Saturday, ESPN2. For more info, NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Kind of course, the road to Frisco, Texas. Yeah, about that. When you start putting things on tape, teams start to go after you. Dunaway has had a few turnovers the last few weeks. Well, they fake the reverse. And Tal Tolliver had a 95 yard return last week. Is that across the 30 yard line? But now the question is how healthy will Dunaway be? But incarnate word, this is as far as they've ever been. 
really their infants to the FCS playoffs became eligible for the first time in 2017. Yeah, and look at what they've been able to do late in the year, just outscore opponents and really get the pedal to the metal and just force people into, you know, defending them, which has been hard. Furman played them well, but couldn't put them away. It was Lindsey Scott's touchdown with 148 on the clock to Cole Wilson that won it last week when they were down by 14 at one point. And this drive starts with Scadaboo. You know, Eric Morris was the head coach last year and uh, led them into the playoffs, led them to, the, led them to that Southland championship. And it took the offensive coordinator job at Washington State, took Cam Ward, their quarterback, with them. And then they get the young whiz kid, G.J. Kinney. You know, that's an incomplete pass going forward. But it's, it's incredible how young this staff yeah. is for Incarnate Word. Kinney, the head coach, is 34. <laughs> Mac Leftwich is offensive coordinator. He's 28. I know it's crazy and talking to him, but they've had a lot of ball, been around ball a long time. And Incarnate Word, when I was in San Antonio working with the Arizona Hot Shots, we scrimmaged there. Great facilities. And you knew they were going to be a team that if they got things together, which they've been able to do, you can see why they're playing so well. You're looking on from afar while eating at the pearl. <laughs> yes, sir. The third down with O'Hara at quarterback, and he throws into the far side complete. And he's got a first down. Needed eight, got 13 out to Jared Gibson. Yeah, really nice throw. And again, Asher O'Hara just making plays, biding time to find Gibson. Has a little bit of pressure coming at him. Just flicks the ball out there. Nice throw. Brian Mays with the tackle. Oh, and Richard comes up and rallies with Davison on the screen. And the ball did juggle out a little bit for Scadaboo, but uh, they say he's down with Davison flying up. Well, plus six on the year and made it make it plus eight for UIW and now minus five for Sacramento State. Well, eye on the clock here inside two minutes. And O'Hara throws that off the hands of Gibson. So clock will stop with inside two minutes to go. Uh, this is obviously not necessarily the last possession of this half, but uh, Jake Dunaway, who a lot of times they would go to in this spot to throw yeah. the ball down the field. He's a tough guy. He'll come back and play. And I don't think they really feel uncomfortable, but Dunaway nicked up on that last drive. Get him in at halftime. Let him get healthy. But you know, Ash O'Hara, <laughs> he's been able to find weapons. And it doesn't really matter. They get the ball back in the second half, so if they can come away with some points, right back in this ball game. Third and 15, and O'Hara with that ball out, and Incarnate Word recovers it. So O'Hara gets sacked, loses the ball, and Sam Latham laid the hit with Chris Whitaker getting on top. Yeah, Sam Latham. Big 6-7 defensive end out of Austin, Texas. And then Chris Whitaker able to rally to the football. Man, that was a big turn of events. Watch off the edge, 90. Look at 90 there. He's going to come in and make the play here. Boom, ball out. They'll take a look at this. But then Chris Whitaker able to come and get that ball late. Had a breakout game against Nevada. Chris Whitaker did four sacks. But this time, Sam Lathan, look at those long levers. Gets to him, and the ball looks like it's out. Yeah, that looks like yeah, empty, yeah. empty hands. Mm -hmm. Ball out. They're gonna, I think they're going to look at this, though. I was surprised it took them this long just because of a play like that. Generally, they'll take a look. Well, turnovers led to Incarnate Word's first lead. They got the yeah. pick from Davison and plus territory to start the drive again. But you can't keep giving the ball away. And if you're Sacramento State, you have to hope that this ball is not a fumble, but looks like there it's coming out before his hand is going forward. Well, you think about last week, a game changing review before halftime for Sac State. Yeah, this would be the. The previous play of a fumble recovered by the defense is under video review. Oh, we're just now reviewing it. <laughs> well, I thought that was the announcement. Yeah, I thought so, too. So this would be the third Sac State turnover if it is if it holds. And that only seven points given up off turnovers. But to me, I think this is a fumble. Looks like the ball is just coming out even before he can get his hand going forward. Uh, Charles, just to recap last week, catch and fumble 
last week in their game against Richmond yeah. and it almost turned into a three score game before halftime overruled Sac State got the ball back got points and won the game. You have to protect the football in this instant and it's just one of those things that Astro O'Hara trying to make a play. The ruling on the field of a fumble recovered by the defense is confirmed. Yeah. First down Nickerman word. That was a pretty easy one. Now again you're asking your defense to hold. And that's been the key. They've only given up seven points off turnovers tonight. But this Incarnate Word team knows they've got a chance to get some momentum, and then they know they have to kick off in the second half. Well, you mentioned it before how at Sac State, it's amazing with their turnovers, they're undefeated yeah. with a minus turnover margin. And Incarnate Word, with their high powered offense, They've gotten the ball back three times because of their defense. Shot after the turnover and incomplete. Chafin and Nelson one more time along the sideline. Man, these DBs are running with these guys step for step. That's really nice coverage by Caleb Nelson. He had them, but overthrows it just a little bit. But you can't ask your defensive back to play any better than this. Chafin just a little overthrown by Lindsey Scott on that one. And not many explosive plays over no. the top in this first half. They've really contained those. A lot of underneath. And 12 balls complete for 113 yards. And Scott well under his normal efficiency. This defense does it to you, man. There's Cooper riding the back of his offensive lineman. And it's third down with a minute 20 left. Well, I would think here it's they're going to play at four downs. They want to score a touchdown. They don't want a field goal here. A quick pop out to Wilson. He's got the first down and potential touchdown saving tackle from Broussard at safety. But it is a first down. Cole Wilson has been huge at times this year. That was a key time. Here's Scott. It breaks down. He tucks it and runs and. Goes through the wash and whirls for three yards. Now inside a minute to go with two timeouts. And a four point lead for Incarnate Word with Sac State getting the ball out of halftime. Scott keeps himself and he's dragged down. And Mapu finishes the play. And it's third down with 46 timeout. left and we got a timeout. Yeah. This will be their second charge timeout of the half. This is a 30 second timeout in league. <laughs> Andy Thompson is not afraid to get in this guy's face and I love it. You know he told us that Cam Broussard you know, they talked about this is all about love. And love can be in a lot of different <laughs> love looks like a lot of different things. <laughs> Troy Taylor was telling us the story yesterday with with Andy Thompson with us loving guys this way yeah. sometimes happens but it, early in his time at Sacramento State he established that that this culture is about love. Yeah. One of his players looked him in the eye and said what's love got to do with this thing. <laughs> but the thing with Andy Thompson that I, I could tell right away I said man you played linebacker did you because uh, you the kind of guy I could feel it when you walked in the room. <laughs> well how about the range from emotions of emotion from him there he's yelling at a guy that he's got oh, his yeah. hands up looks like he's dancing. He's willing his guys that's why they've been so good even with the turnovers of not allowing people to get in the end zone. They're going to call task right here. And they're trying to overcome a second straight turnover from their offense. And it's Cooper in motion and Scott taking off electric with his legs and slides down for a first down inside the 10. That's exactly what he was telling them. We can't let Lindsey Scott beat us with his legs and sure enough he does and now they're right back in scoring position. And 34 seconds in eternity. For this incarnate word offense. Here's Cooper. Squeezes in there and down to the five. They had to stop the counter play, but it's picking up five or six yards every time, and now they're going with slight tempo to get into the end zone. And they can still get a first down here, and the play blown dead. And a timeout defensively for Sac State. Before the snap, timeout, Sacramento State. Second charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout in league. Good call by Andy Thompson because this offense looked like it was getting ready to go, go in the low red zone and get score, get into scoring position or score. Now he's got to coach his guys up to say, look, we got to stop him here, hold him to a field goal. We get the ball to come out in the second half. 
Yeah, so keep it a one-score yeah. game and then try to go tie it coming out of the locker yeah. room. I mean, this is why they're the number one seed. They don't let you score easy. And I think it's because the, the, the mentality of him and his defensive staff. Number two seed, excuse me, North Dakota State is the number one seed. Duh. <laughs> yeah, North Dakota State's already won. It's the three. South Dakota State, the, the one to play tomorrow yeah. against Holy Cross. Remember, it was all chalk last oh, yeah. week. Yeah. The Incarnate Word is trying to change that after we saw the score of the Montana State game leading big at halftime. The game clock is 17 seconds, please. 17 seconds of the game clock, please. Just from watching film, you knew this game was going to be close. And I don't I don't think that changes. See if it's the first two score lead of the night for Incarnate Word. If they can punch this in, they can still get a first down to the one yard line. One timeout in their pocket. Scott emptying it out, throws to the boundary, and a strong tackle into the boundary out there on Chapin. And Chapin taken out by Ordaz, and it's third down. Really nice play by Abel Ordaz, getting over there and securing the tackle right away. What it's been against Andy Thompson's defense a lot in this first half. Underneath to the top two targets, Chafin and Grimes. Now third down with the clock stops. And there will be no snap. Another timeout. timeout. Sacramento State. This is their final charge timeout of the half. You can't take them with you. 30 second timeout <laughs> in Lynch. You know, it becomes a, a cat and mouse game. Troy Taylor says he does a lot by feel. Andy Thompson has worked with them and understands what his coach wants. This defense has to come up with the stop. Incarnate Ward wants to score six, not three. Seven after the PAT. Right. So massive four yards oh, yeah. between the spot of the ball and the end zone. And think about critical play in this first half. You said, remember the Fulcher drop. Yeah. Since then, a touchdown for Incarnate Word and two turnovers for Sacramento State. Yeah, they, they've had the penchant to not protect the football. And when you do that, it makes it easy for this other team, a team that's so explosive, you don't want to give them extra possessions. The tank is empty on timeouts for the Hornets. One in the pocket of Incarnate Word. Four yards from a two-score lead. Color in motion. Cooper up the middle, barrels his way for a touchdown. Nice play design. They make you think McCuller is going to have something to do with the blocking, and it just opens up the middle of that field. And Cooper with a real strong run for six. You see McCuller coming back. You have to protect the quarterback that pulls the defense out. You see Mapu, watch Mapu has to go five, and that opens up the middle, and Cooper able to get in. These, these coordinators, man, are really good. They got some sneaky good stuff happening. Mac Leftwich designing up the touchdown run for Cooper. And the lead is 11 with 11 seconds left. Yeah, it's just, we talk about eye candy and doing things, moving guys around. That's why this offense is so effective against a defense that just doesn't give you much. Look at number five here, how he moves out. He sees, he thinks what's going to happen there, and then it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Basically, everything in the middle, Mapu thinks, hey, Lindsey Scott, I got to protect, and he overruns it. And then you only have one guy, Abel Ordaz, who's trying to stop Cooper. It becomes the one-on-one -on -one matchup, almost like basketball. He's able to get in for six. We talked about it before, the physicality of Marcus Cooper. He's 185 pounds. Usually on a fill like that, a guy that's 185, yeah. you can tackle him a little bit higher, but not him. Abel Ordaz is 200 pounds, but he packs a punch. Look at how he's built. And I think he has a chip on his shoulder because he is a little undersized and he sees all these other guys. And you, when you're a smaller guy in stature, you have to play like that. But look at his lower half. So he thinks, hey, the only way I can make it to pass this level is if I show you how effective I am, no matter who comes up against me. I thought you were going to give us a little weight distribution. <laughs> 145 lower half, the rest up top. <laughs> 
So less than 10 seconds left in the half, and Marshall Martin was the up back, and he's across midfield. So time for one more snap in plus territory. And Tylen George saved that from being an even bigger play. What they say about him 21 mile per hour on the GPS. The fastest guy on the team. I, I still say the DBs are talking trash because they constantly think they're the fastest ones or the receivers or the running backs. <laughs> well, you can say I've got better speed and better hands. Well, he was a running back in high school who scored all kind of touchdowns and was really effective. And Troy Taylor said it. He said, and we both agreed with the way the NFL is now. He's a little undersized at 225, but he's a matchup problem. He's, he's a willing blocker. That 210 is wrong. He's a little bit bigger than that. It's right as far as what's listed. Yeah. So that, yeah. That, that is, it's listed that way. But that, that's correct work from our <laughs> graphics team. I want to oh, oh, yeah. make sure. I'm not disparaging the graphics team. It's what they got from the school. But he's about 225, and we were trying to predict how big he could get. That's what the NFL teams want to know, too. Yeah. So final play of this first half, unless a defensive penalty. And Scadaboo out to the edge. And he's taken down by Anla. And he is down yet. Yeah, yeah. Clocks. Clocks expired. Ball was not out. And Anya Lebechi puts a close to this half. And they have not lost this year. Their one loss came at southeastern Louisiana when they trailed at halftime, but not here, up 11. I love that. Those two guys are warriors, and they're talking to each other like, we got a whole other half to go. Scadaboo and Anya Lebechi. Off of turnovers, Lindsey Scott and Incarnate Word turned them into two touchdowns. Able to make plays off the turnovers. You have to do that in order to beat the Sacramento State Ball Club. Winner to the final four for the first time in school history. An 11 point lead for the 11 win Cardinals. You're watching the NCAA Division I FCS quarterfinals from Sacramento State. It's an 11 point lead for Incarnate Word, trying to be the first team non chalk to move on in the last couple of weeks. The seventh national seed over the number two national seed. Back with Buck, Charles Arbuckle, Connor Onion. And uh, defensive fans, beware. A lot of offensive talk in this game. You're going to see some more in those highlights, but defense standing up for Incarnate Word a couple of times with turnovers. They had to, and that they made plays, and then their offense was able to capitalize. That's the one thing that Sac State hadn't done a whole lot of, of giving up points off turnovers. Ash O'Hare getting it started early, making plays there, and then it's allowed them to score touchdowns. Scadaboo first. Lindsey Scott Jr. with a key play there on third down. Able to get the ball down the field. And then he's able to run effectively. This touchdown seemed to get them sparked, get them back in the game. With Cooper there. And then some nice plays by Sacramento State answering each and every time. The problem for them was they, the wrinkles that were thrown at them. And then Lindsey Scott going in, scoring here as well. But the key component of this game was the turnovers. Davidson there, they are able to score 14 points off of those turnovers. And right here, Cooper with a real nice strong run on the inside in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Well, and we talked a lot about how those are offensive turnovers, but the defense had something to say about that too. They can play on that side of the ball for Incarnate Word. So off we go in the second half with Sacramento State set to get it first. And with the two quarterback system, saw Jake Dunaway go down injured in the first half. He was out warming up to start the second half, but it was mostly O'Hara and Lindsey Scott had a, a, a three touchdown first half. Yeah, he was able to get things going, and I think Dunaway looks like he's going to be back. O'Hara is going to start this quarter or this half, but I think we'll see Dunaway as well. This defensive pressure, though, they were able to really step up. Jonathan Patkey. His defensive line really got after the quarterbacks in that second half, second quarter. Standing up the two defensive ends to start the second half. And the fake misdirection. And O'Hara is tracked down in the perimeter after he gets seven. Well, that's Charles Pierre at 375 running him down. Starting from the zero technique and working himself all the way outside. Sam Lathan went down hard inside and Ash O'Hara will make you pay. Watch zero. Watch him track him down all the way down the line of scrimmage and then just put his full body effect on it. It's a whole lot of people coming at you, man. Woo. 
And Asher O'Hara has the first down. Uh, Jonathan Patkey, the defensive coordinator for Incarnate Word, he said, that's the biggest guy I've ever coached in my life. And, and he, he said, just made that play. And he said he's athletic. He can move. He can run around. We saw him before the game with no shirt on. <laughs> he, he was showing all his body. Well, ball is tipped and incomplete. Uh, Williams in front of Sean Holton. Yeah, we didn't need a, a number for Charles Pierre. You got Williams a little hobbled after the play, by the way. Yeah. Pierre Williams had a really big game last week. He has been a little quiet along with Chris Miller. Another name we haven't called. Yeah, Miller was a game time decision, yeah. unlikely to play, is yeah, the word we right. got. Down in the field before the game. And that could be another reason why the offense hasn't clicked as well. Uh, back between the tackles with Scadaboo on the stiff arm. He's tracked down past midfield with the first down. How many people is Scadaboo looking to hit? All 11. <laughs> he gets in the open field and he earns his 22 yards. Scadaboo running the ball inside. Good blocking there by. Martin and then he just runs and looks people up. And that's what Incarnate Word told us right is he is going to stiff arm you. That's what they've told their guys on defense all week. The Rams ahead for a couple more. I'd like how you put that though. He looks people up <laughs> when he gets in your area. Yeah. yeah. He is looking for folks. Going back to the Yellow Pages days. Yeah. He's over 50 yards on the night. Also grabbed a couple of balls out of the backfield in the pass game. O'Hara fakes to Scadaboo and roaming around in the pocket. A jump ball is incomplete. Devin Gandy tied up there with Brian Mays in his third down. Yeah. Uh, Ash O'Hara can buy a lot of time, but it just doesn't, he can't quite find his receiver. Cameron Preston. Seen a lot of helmets off. Yeah, Cameron Preston, 93. His helmet came off early, and he's just standing there. It doesn't go through the play, so he has to come out for a play. But Cameron Preston is the little guy. He's 6'1", 304. So off the field, like you mentioned, with the helmet coming off on third down. And the fake to Martin, but that edge is sealed off. Stephen Parker setting the edge, and it's fourth down. And it looked like the ball came free. Maybe it didn't, but no, they marked him down. Ball okay. came out at the end. Marked him down. It'll be fourth and four. What they did a nice job of is really not letting him Ooh. get loose. And that ball does Ball's come out. out. Yeah. Ball is free, but recovered by Sacramento State. Riley, the right guard, got back on top of it. And Kendall Riley was nicked up earlier in the first half. Was on that play, Dunaway went out. Running the option here with Scadaboo. Into the outside, he's got a first down. And seeking out tacklers again, moving the chains. You keep saying, keep contain, keep contain. But the problem is, you just know, Asher, you got to stay wide. Look, but there's no containment out there. And then you get it to Scadaboo, and he's able to run around the edge. And Buck, there's that stiff arm again. Oh, yeah. It's a jackhammer. Now the jackhammer moves the chains and then Gandy back to the pass game gets seven. Yeah, this is a big drive for the Sacramento State offense. They've struggled a little bit. They turn the ball over. But this is where you answer when you get a chance to battle this incarnate word defense. Well, most points they've trailed by the entire season. But they have won a lot of close games. They're accustomed to it. They don't want to be in this position, but they know how to win when it's like this. Fulcher the back on second and five. And they pitch it out to Fulcher. And hand down inside the 10. And he car carries the pile for a first down. I really like this play call right here. Because you can't account for the quarterback. And then when you think you have him, you flip it out. Charles Pierre down. Got some of that. The tire markings and all the things that is in the turf in his eyes. And so training staff for Sacramento State out to see the guy they call OCP. Yeah. 
Latham comes down hard. It creates an edge. You can see Martin out there blocking. They're doing some option principles. Yeah. He goes down hard to try to make the tackle. And the, that rubber, all that stuff pops up in your eyes. Usually when you walk on this turf or run around on it, you'll get it in your shoes. So they advance. Does he come out with a visor next week? <laughs> no, I don't think he'll do that. So Charles Please. Pierre is down. Troy Taylor talking with the officials, the head coach for Sac State, right behind where Charles Pierre down. <laughs> and Sacramento State was starting to get a little rhythm. You know, clearly there's something wrong with OCP. And so uh, G.J. Kenny looking on with uh, Olivier Charles Pierre down. Head coach that's headed to Texas State. That drive he season. made what, what used to be Southwest Texas uh, in, in San Marcos, Texas State. He's driving from San Antonio up there, uh, you know, really trying to get his new position going but really trying to get these guys to the next level. 100% in the red zone, four trips, four touchdowns for Sac State. Yeah, for Incarnate Word, right? Excuse me. Yeah, for Incarnate Word, for G.J. Kinney and uh, Amy was with Gus Malzahn last year for just a year. He has moved a lot. A decade of moving as a player and a coach. And OCP off the field. And back to Scataboo. And that pile still moving forward. And on the doorstep of a drive to open up the second half with a touchdown. Yeah, they're really starting to get effective. This drive, you can see Scataboo really playing a big role. And being key there. They've got to come away with points. And a, uh, they need a touchdown because this incarnate word offense is really rolling. And Tal Tolliver in motion, and Scadaboo knifes his way in for a touchdown. Yeah, that was the answer we expected. <laughs> Scadaboo says, hey, y'all can talk all the trash you want. <laughs> I talk it with my, with my play. Zach McKinney said, you win this time. <laughs> Touchdown for Scadaboo. Yeah. It was his drive. Played a real key part from the very beginning and finished it off. PAT punched through, and you talk about a sustained drive in this game. Long field. And about three quarters of the yards coming from that guy. Well, what's interesting is these are long drives, but they're not taking long to get get down there. But Scadaboo finishing effectively and understanding what I got to do. Look at, I see where I need to go. Can you stop me? No, I'm in for six. Well, Sacramento State was down their biggest margin of the year into halftime, but right down the field with Scadaboo to get back into the end zone. Yeah, I mean, it was an effective drive. He played a key role in it. They threw some. A wrinkle with the option, and it really threw this incarnate word defense off. You think 40 points a game, Sac State pass heavy team, right? No. <laughs> Scadaboo, the big sky offensive MVP. And here's Cole Wilson flagged down behind the play, and he's angled out shy of midfield. Flags all over the place. Sac State averages 235.8 yards rushing on the season, 230 tonight. A flag at the 45, also a flag at the 30 on opposite sides of the field here on that return for Cole Wilson. Sentowski, the kicker that eventually got Wilson out of bounds. Part of that Sac State success has been consistency in the whole line. There are two fouls on the play, both on the receiving team. Holding. Receiving team number 25, that will be declined. Holding. Receiving team number 26, 10 yards, and responding to the foul. First down, incomplete word. So Lindsey Scott in that first half added three more touchdowns to that single season record in the FCS. Yeah, man. You got to do it with your legs sometimes. 
but you also have to throw the ball, which is a really nice play here to Marcus Cooper. And then again, getting it to Cooper and then doing his own thing as well. And Cooper up the middle, shedding tackles. And an explosive start gets 20 yards on the opening play of the drive. Yeah, they want to answer. Sacramento State said, okay, we go, we're going to run the ball, and then they come right back with a strong run by Marcus Cooper. And Cooper started that scoring for Incarnate Word with the touchdown. And Scott is sandwiched out. Two runs in a row. They do a lot of RPO game, but those last two runs were to attack this defense for Sac State. No waste of no time behind Wilson and off the tackle of Broussard. And upended right at the sticks by Caleb Nelson in the boundary. Wilson has a different gear. He catches the ball and it's like go. A young player, <laughs> he's got some talent. And had his first career touchdown last week to win the game. Here's Scott on third and one into open space. Lindsey Scott. And he's down at the 10 yard line. He recognized that the spy and everything else that was supposed to have him didn't have him. 42 yards right away. He sees you got me, but you don't have me. And when you miss him, Armand Bailey had eyes on him. He's able to find an open lane and get down the field. Brock Mather was also there. Those two did not come up with him, and he knew right after that, I got an open lane and I can get down the field. Dylan Junell, I think, is one down on the play. Yeah, the corner, I remember Troy Taylor in Sac State, thin at that position. Prince Washington also been injured the last couple weeks. And so we ran all those highlights of Scott through the air in the first half, and then they start the second half with Cooper up the gut. Yeah, they put him there, and it's a counter. It just puts him in position. You see those two offensive linemen coming. He hesitates for a second and then hits the hole 20 yards. They were worried about the counter, and what did Mac Leftwood say? We're going to run a counter against him because I think it'll work on the inside. That was one of the first things he said. We like our counter stuff this week. We talked to him a couple days ago. And Scott just went for 42 yards on the ground, and he gets a couple there. Armand Bailey met him right after the line of scrimmage. Well, the thing with Sac State is they're going to score. You've got to answer. And now the defense has to figure out a way to tighten up. It's been on the ground, and they've really pounded other than the Cole Wilson catch and short run. Andy Thompson, former national championship winning linebacker at Montana in 2001, signaling in the call. And he brings five guys, six guys up to the line of scrimmage on second down. And Cooper running into that front. And Hardeman trying to drag him back. And not much there. So it'll be third down. This is the spot that the Sac State defense was in just before halftime. And Incarnate Word barreled in for the touchdown. Well, I don't know how <laughs> Marcus Cooper got out of that without a tackle for loss. That was almost like a scataboo kind of situation where he was able to still almost pick up pos positive yards. Look at that number, Buck, yeah. on third down tonight. That, that You talk about efficiency, <laughs> that's efficiency. Off of the play fake, Scott to the end zone, incomplete. Patrick Dean was underneath on the coverage and got a hand on it. Yeah, Patrick Dean with a huge play, forcing the field goal. Lindsey Scott thought he had a receiver open. Patrick Dean at the last second. Great break on the ball. And if he's not there, Ordaz might have been there over the top, too. Yeah, that's a really nice play by Patrick Dean. Holding them to a field goal. And so the field goal try from 24, making a seven point game. And that is perfect from Carson Moore. Not many field goals tried by GJ Kinney this year, but the seventh is good. 
It's a one score game incarnate word from 24 yards out extends their lead with a field goal to seven points here at Hornet Stadium where Ryan Coogler used to play wide receiver. He's a writer producer Black Panther Wakanda forever. I know you saw yeah. that in theaters right now right <laughs> haven't seen Wakanda forever but I am going to see it. But he was a, a, a wide receiver here has done some great things in the movie industry and Tom Hanks another famous one he didn't play ball like Ryan Coogler though look at those numbers he did and in, in, uh, in, uh, Forrest Gump <laughs> Tom Hanks did <laughs> that counts for something right? yeah, he didn't play for real <laughs> that wasn't for real no playing for Bear Bryant uh, run Forrest run <laughs> yeah but Ryan Coogler also uh, he, he produced Creed yes 2015 good, good talented director producer so Tal Tolivert had the big return last week, but one has not broken for him tonight. And a long field to go for Sacramento State down a score. Well, they have found a way not to let Tal Tolliver have a huge play. Uh, but I think the key now is how do you continue to feed that young man right there? That last drive was a prime example of 46 yards on five rushes. He made a game of that last drive alone. Yeah. Scadaboo, the Big Sky offensive MVP, uh, over a thousand yards on the season, and with the two quarterback system and him, this has been a, a hard offense to stop. And right back to Scadaboo into the waiting arms of Stephen Parker. Yeah, that time they sniffed it out. There were five defenders there with Parker. We talk about a whole bunch of Cardinals and big. OCP in the middle of it. Tire marks are out of the eye. There's transfer out of University of Houston. Scadaboo is still averaging 6.2 yards a carry. That was about a first down a touch for him last drive. A lot of it on this type of play. And Scadaboo not easy to take down. There's a flag back behind the play. Uh, after O'Hara pitched it, the flag came out at his feet with Stephen Parker in the play. Yeah, I think in the area of holding. A personal foul, one from the pass of 14 of the defense. 15 yards we added to the end of the run, automatic first down. And so it was Parker after the pitch for O'Hara called for the penalty. And Olivier Charles Pierre is down in the field, injured. Yeah, late hit. So there's the hit on O'Hara and then Charles Pierre standing up and then went yeah, down yeah. after. Yeah, well, Stephen Parker, when you have an option guy, you want to hit him and you want to make sure you attack him, but you can't do it after he has already released the ball. So an interesting roughing the passer call right because it's yeah. on the pitch. But that's still a run play so I would take it to be you know just a <laughs> more more late hit than yeah, roughing late, the passer. late hit than roughing the passer. So Charles Pierre is good there good there and then he goes down. <laughs> well they work. Was there a little friendly fire here? Oh yeah, yeah. Right at the end of it. Had, had Jared Soyring come in and kind of throw an elbow shoulder at the top of that pile. You write about friendly fire. But Stephen Parker there if you just let him down they had done a nice job of defending Scadaboo on those last two runs. But you give Sac State now some new life. And these guys have been able to score. When they protected the football, they've done a pretty nice job. And if you just flipped us over, Connor Onion, Charles Arbuckle, maybe you're watching Montana State, William and Mary. Thanks for staying up late night with us. Dunaway's back in at quarterback, and he has a sideline shot to Scadaboo, who tight ropes the sideline. 
And he's taken down at the 40 with a fresh set of downs. Yeah, we hadn't seen Dunaway since the first half when he was nicked up, but now he's back. A little bit of razzle dazzle on that play. Got a little bit of action there, and it leaves Gadaboo wide open. Stephen Parker overruns it, able to come back and make the tackle. But Scadaboo, a key component in the run game and the pass game. And Dunaway, who went out injured in the first half, returns and throws a strike. Now Astro O'Hara back into quarterback. Off of the play fake. O'Hara spinning, and he gets the extra yards off of that whirling dervish of a play. And he just makes people miss. The first thing you know about him when you watch it on tape, watch the spin. Put you in the spinner, and then I'm just going to get down. He doesn't take direct hits. And, and that's the thing that frustrates the defense. You think you have him, and then all of a sudden he's by you. 69 yards on the ground, 10 of 14 in the air. And he pulls it out of there again. Looking to run again. So you said that it's hard to take him down. He slips, he slides, he jumps, he gets yards. Well, the first thing I saw in my mind was that he's slippery. And even talking to coaches in the league, they just talk about how well he can do that. Now there's a bigger distribution because Dunaway was hurt. I think these guys are now starting to run into each other because O'Hara is doing such a nice job of making people miss. Now, Troy Taylor's a little upset because he wants to get his yeah. offense going, and it's disrupting his rhythm. Right, Chris Whitaker is down. So we saw uh, Olivier Charles Pierre go down earlier on this drive. Well, it's another defensive lineman with Chris Whitaker the ends. All right, so that 55 nothing score out in Bozeman. I think some of that audience has come over to our game, <laughs> one score game. So it looks like you know, Brent Vegan and Montana State going back to the semifinal second straight year. North Dakota State is already there. Question here is are we on a crash course for a national championship rematch? North Dakota State against Montana State. Could we get an all big sky oh, final? Man, could we get an all Missouri Valley final? Or could the Southland crash the party? I love this time of year. Now somebody in this game is going to their first Final Four. There's Scadaboo off the pitch again. He's got a fresh set of downs. Really good blocking on the outside by Pierre Williams, not getting a hold. And that offensive line now starting to really mash this incarnate word defense. They're looking for answers. And this long drive, you can see guys' hands on the hips. These guys are firing off and coming after him. This whole line has played with a lot of the same guys all year long. Yeah, Troy Stiefel, we were wondering if he would get back in there. Did not start last week. Move Jackson Slater out to the tackle spot. And they've moved the ball on the ground in this second half. Scadaboo circling around back there. And O'Hara is dragged down after he does make a positive play out of it. Yeah. And second down. Darius Richmond with the chase down. Basically pulling his, journey, his shirt underneath from him. Say, hey, I'm not going to let you get away from me, man. Almost needed a new T-shirt. Almost <laughs> yeah. tore it off him. Yeah. Well, Sacramento State opened up the second half of the score when they were down 11, then forced a field goal. Trying to march down and tie it. Uh, pitch wasn't there for O'Hara, and he's piled up at the line of scrimmage. A really good defense that time. Didn't have an option to pitch that out. He just had to take it and get whatever he could out of that. Putting him in a third and long situation now. It was Anya Lebecci, Southland Defensive Player of the Year, making another play for no game. It came in with 96 tackles. This guy plays hard, powerful, and explosive is how his coach described him. This incarnate word defense has done a great job on third down tonight. One of six on the game. Here's O'Hara throwing over the middle, complete to Williams, turning up field. Touchdown, Sacramento State. O'Hara knows he's going to get hit. Dudmon knows he has a guy in the middle of the field, Pierre Williams. 
catch and turn for six. Hare knows they're coming with pressure. He sees that game on the inside, but I know 84. Show yourself. Throw it to the numbers in the 84. Pierre Williams in for six. And this game is tied back up with about four to go in the third quarter. Are you shocked? Not at all. This, these guys are going to battle. They want to get to the next round, and Carnet Ward does as well. The real key is, can you be friendly to your quarterback? Your quarterback's going to get hit, but he comes. Pierre Williams comes back to him and then turns for six. We got a tie ball game. 14-3, Sacramento State since halftime. They were down 11, and Astro O'Hara just threw another touchdown to Pierre Williams. He threw it. The question is, did he see it? <laughs> I don't think he did. Cameron Preston's coming, and he's barreling down, but Astro O'Hara throws the ball, gets it to his receiver. I think I have a touchdown. I know he had a catch. But sure enough, nice play. And way to battle back. I, I, what, what we expect, a close ball game. These guys are going to go into the fourth quarter and just battle each other to try to get to that next round. And yeah, no question of would it be close, more of a question of how high would the point total get tonight. 62 combines, all squared at 31. And the quarterfinals. Uh, no space again on kick coverage, so long field coming for Lindsey Scott and Incarnate Word. So first half, Sacramento State, they scored first. Couple of answers back from Incarnate Word. Took the lead into the locker room, but the Hornets have come back and have outplayed them since the halftime break. And they've also not turned the ball over, which has given them opportunities to score points. That's why they've outscored UIW. A winner to their first semifinal. A couple of teams that have been there in the past already on their way to the semifinals. It was kind of an all blue blood final four last year. Now some new blood into the semifinals out of this game. And a good play from Mather coming up from linebacker to make that a short game. Yeah, Sac State really defended that well. On second and eight, Sacramento State was trying to get organized up front. And even with the scramble, they stuffed Scott. Well, they were not aligned position right, and but they were still able to make this play. Incarnate Word was trying to go fast, but it worked against them in that particular instance. Great defense by Sac State. Brandon Knott, look, they were out of position, but they still got to their area. And Brandon Knott, okay, I got you. And then where are my, where are my buddies? Where are my buddies? They all came up and made a play. I feel like you, you just had a flashback. <laughs> Third down and eight. Revisit that after the play. And underneath, Grimes has had a quiet night, shaking his way for a first down, and he's out toward midfield. Man. Third down tonight has been money for Incarnate Word. And Grimes should have been tackled, maybe short of the first down, but no, made people miss and picked up the first. Right back to the line for the Cardinals. And uh, Cooper taken not for a ride. And he gets halfway to the first down. Yeah, that counter play has been like automatic five. But Grimes right here with the eyes and the intent of Armand Bailey. But he can't be there. Grimes, look at him. Finding people to make miss and then getting the ball down the field. Really nice job by Grimes of picking up the first down. Well, more than half his yards on the night on that play. The Sac State defense has done a nice job of taking away the two big weapons, but it's been the, the mix of things that have been able to happen, and they hurt themselves by not by the turnovers in the first half, and now they've just really got going. And Brock Mather, seven tackles on the night. Uh, Grimes last week it was back and forth in their second round win he would get hot mm -hmm. and then it would be Chafin that would get hot and, and those guys had touchdown after touch the first quarter was Chafin second was Grimes but it's been mostly a, a Cooper and Scott quarterback running back night it has been and the defensive backs have done a nice job defending both of them <laughs> under the lights in Sacramento the winner keeps their Season alive on the semifinals. 
And a deep shot, and there's a big play to Chafin for a touchdown! Wow! Underneath to up top, Grimes and Chafin. And it was almost underthrown, but Chafin still able to reach back and take that in for six. This offense is explosive, man. Chafin with some really good speed. Two receivers on the outside, they cross, confuses the defense, they get behind the safety, and still, Mapu almost pulled the ball out, but Chafin, with a great concentration, scores. Back-to-back -back plays, those top two targets. Not going to be silent anymore. Well, they said, look, we've been silent way too long. But again, the play design, you see those receivers cross, getting a little confusion in the secondary, and Chafin goes to the house. Well, even in the rare times where Scott underthrows the ball, a pretty good bet that Chafin or Grimes are going to go get it. We said they had been quiet, but they made their presence known on that drive. Well, it became a little bit noisier on the perimeter for the Cardinals. Well, they said a little bit like Christian Wilk Watson, but man, coming up big on that play. Hey, is that rangy, cagey yeah. downfield threat just like Christian Watson? Well, and, and Lindsey Scott didn't quite get it out there to him like you thought. Great coverage almost by Mapu, but, <laughs> but Chafin with a huge catch. And so Lindsey Scott is 58th touchdown thrown. The records keep on coming. Total touchdowns last week, now passing touchdowns this week. We talked about how many points would be scored. I didn't think 90, <laughs> but at the pace these guys are going, we still have 229 in the third quarter. And those two guys, if they connect again, we could be on pace for, for 90 between these two teams. Yeah, that's what I asked you on the car ride over. <laughs> could we get to 90? I said, I don't know. I think that's a little high. Well, that would line up with the averages for these teams on offense. And Tal Tolliver hasn't broken out yet the return game, but his best one of the night out across the 45. So last drive, Asher O'Hara started it on the ground, spinning his way for a first down, finished it, taking a big hit for a touchdown. Oh, yeah. At O'Hara does a really nice job of running around and making some plays. Scadaboo, and then the finish with Pierre Williams. And it was those two last week that yeah. won the game with six minutes to go. Hooking up from 50 yards. And a Dunaway in at quarterback. Asher O'Hara is out on the perimeter. So this is the fun with the two quarterback system for Sac State. And it's a timeout for the Hornets. Timeout. Second minute State. First charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout of the league. So with two quarterbacks, you think about what Montana State does. They have a two quarterback system. We've seen them run some jet sweeps where Tommy Malott fields it and throws it. Uh, you, you think back to the Chris Leak, Tim Tebow days. Some other examples of this working Big 12 championship in 2012 with Oklahoma. Yeah, and, and I think when you think about having two quarterbacks, you always say, well, it won't work, but we've seen these systems. What I do like about Asher O'Hare is that he can throw the ball just as effectively. He runs it well. Dunaway, who struggled some, but still has made plays even tonight. And when you got Troy Taylor, who's a quarterback himself, played in those cap back in the day, we played against each other when he was at Cal. He understands quarterback play as well as anybody. He was coaching guys around here when he was in high school as a high school coach. Didn't know if he was going to be a college coach. And maybe on the precipice of the next level. There's Dunaway over the middle, caught by Martin, and keeps the hand down to gain the first down. Well, Troy Taylor's a brilliant offensive mind, right? Oh, yeah. He, he said, you know, play calls, designing stuff, and as a high school coach, great. But his wife is the reason that he used the two-quarterback system. <laughs> That's right. And he says it's a field thing, but sometimes he goes to her and says, what should I do? <laughs> and she was like, why can't you play two quarterbacks? And he's like, honey, that's not really how this works. But he tried it. It's worked. They're 12 and 0. And moving the ball down, looking for a game-tying score with Williams underneath there. But the, the team 
respects it too and they play well for either one of these guys when you turn on the tape they do a nice job even with Dunaway's struggle they stay with them they don't go away now Asher O'Hara will come in at certain points especially when you get in the red zone he's limping a little bit but he's still a warrior for him he's got them here and so they're good with the two quarterback system about as well as I've seen it run and Dunaway almost it almost looked like the two quarterback system wasn't going to work because he got injured in the first half but has come back out and he's off the field here's O'Hara and stepping into this throw incomplete we had Martin breaking free a stride short though and it's third down well Sam Lathan made it too difficult for Asher O'Hara to get that ball off he wanted to get it to his key weapon Martin but he just didn't have time. So close a little long and he lost it in space for where it was but it wasn't a clean throw and look at Sam Lathan and again Cameron Preston keeps being around every single time Astro O'Hare couldn't set his feet and the ball was just a little off so after the downfield shot it's third and short and they run the sweep with Fulcher and he's got enough for the first down and it sneaks his way out of bounds. They do so many different things and the minute you think you have them stop they come with Fulcher on the jet sweep. They'll do the option to you. They'll, they'll, they'll just find different ways to attack you. Little, little chinks in your armor. Oh, Troy Taylor is so imaginative in how he uses Marcus Fulcher especially who yeah. just had that first down. He'll get him in there and, and sometimes in pass protection and get the wide split with the tackle and put him in there for pass protection. Even. And it's Scadaboo the back here motioning out. And O'Hara steps into it has another one complete and they've got another first down. It's Gibson this time inside the red zone. They stretch that defense out and leave the middle of the field. I love how they attack the middle of the field with their receiving floor. And Gibson right there able to catch it and they're going to go with a little bit of their own tempo. The final minute of this third quarter. Here's O'Hara dancing around and he spikes it. And Incarnate Word playing like that's a live ball. And it is ruled incomplete. Whistle blows Stephen Parker with the defensive lineman's dream there. <laughs> uh, looks like Anya Labeci. And Stephen Parker ran it out just to be sure. Sideline for Incarnate Word thinks that this should be a fumble. Was that forward? Was it a lateral? Was it backwards? Well, that's the key. Where, from what angle? They called it an incomplete pass. <laughs> All right, so no buzz down to the field. Incomplete, second and goal. To the end zone, Scadaboo down there, but incomplete. Yeah, coverage from Caleb Culp, the safety. Yeah, Caleb Culp, one of the big hitters. But that time, did a really nice job of covering Scadaboo in the end zone. He just makes a play. Usually on this wheel route, you'll see a receiver coming wide open. He's right there. Actually, he was in better position to catch that ball than Scadaboo. Uh, here in NorCal, Caleb Colt said that he studied Ronnie Lott, 49ers legends. He was done away back in the field at quarterback and incomplete. And it's fourth down. Parker Clayton well, wasn't going to make the end zone anyway. But now decision for Sacramento State looks like the field goal units coming up. Yeah, you've got to get points here. The way this incarnate war team has been scoring, you got to stay with them. Anything you can get helps you. Well, you'd think some trust in your defense and probably some trust in your offense to go down and get more points later in this game, too. Oh, Not definitely. I mean, there's a lot of game left here, Connor. And Sentowski bends it inside the upright. Yeah. That was a little cozy. That was a little close. Shootout. <laughs> yeah, I think the chip shot, not such a chip shot. Huh. So even though these drives are taking nine plays, the time that they're taking only 
It was a shorter drive because of the long, <laughs> I know, oh. and because of the long return by Tal Tolliver. 49 yards, two minutes and 25 seconds. Troy Taylor was like, oh, that was close. Too close for comfort. And almost shaved off the inside paint of the upright. <laughs> Kyle Sentowski, he's been solid this year, has a huge leg. He's been good from 53 this year. And you're watching the NCAA FCS Championship in the quarterfinals. Winner to the semifinals next weekend, Friday and Saturday on ESPN2. For more info, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. So, Buck, you think about the Final Four last year. It was Montana State, South Dakota State, North Dakota State, James Madison. The teams that had been there before. Somebody's going tonight that has never been. In a one score game, final play of this third quarter. And out into open space with Incarnate Word. Getting good field position with a Sentowski tackle. And that'll do it for the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. It's been all chalk tonight. Four seed Montana State. They're into the semifinals. North Dakota State beats Sanford. Do we have our first upset of the last two weeks? Or will Sacramento State stay undefeated into the semifinals? Fourth quarter coming up. She was taking a cat nap before the fourth quarter. Smart. Ready to go now. Smart. <laughs> Smart. So winners going to the semifinals. One score game. Montana State, North Dakota State, last year's championship game. Both winners tonight. Sacramento State Incarnate Word trying to go for the first time to the semifinals. South Dakota State hoping it's finally their year after all their playoff success. Number one overall seed they play tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Here's Lindsey Scott, first play of the fourth quarter. The dynamic quarterback cuts it inside. What a start to the fourth quarter. 64 yards to the house. Looks like Armand Bailey. His eyes is the guy that was spying him gets blocked and there's no one there. Lindsey Scott sees it and takes it to the house. Man, every time Sac State does something, it seems like Incarnate Word answers. That'll wake you up from your cat now. Woo. Man. You talk about taking the life out of the crowd. 144 yards on the ground tonight for Lindsey Scott. And the second rushing touchdown, and she's awake. <laughs> Very much so. Everybody blocked up. But 30 is coming in. Armand Bailey, he's gone, vacated. You see no one there. And look at the blocking out front by his guys. Everybody taking care of him. Jalen Campbell with a huge block once he gets past the line of scrimmage. That interior offensive line has done a really nice job, but I have to say these receivers are blocking their butts off down the field. Well, remember what G.J. Kinney told us? He said that Jalen Campbell doesn't get a lot of attention. I just want you guys to know he's incredible, and he yeah. led the way with that block. Well, look at that, and he blocked him up, and that allows Lindsey Scott Jr. to take it to the house. Walter Payton. Finalists, you can see why this kid plays some football. Home crowd out of it, road bench not. <laughs> oh no, not at all. And he did this last week too, by the way. Yeah. Lindsey Scott running on uh, first down, second down, third well, down. Well, when it's no one in the middle of the field, it's man to man, and he knows that. He takes advantage of it, and he's able to go to the house with it. Buck, you think about all the passing accolades that he had. He was at Nichols before this. He rushed for a thousand yards in the Southland last year. Uh, going for 302 playoff games on the ground. And Tao Tolliver off the skipping kickoff is out across the 30. So back to the score that it was at halftime, or the margin that it was at halftime. Sacramento State down 11 again. They won't panic a lot of time, but you have to come away with points. They protected the ball well in this half, and I think they'll continue. This is going to go back and forth. What do you think uh, about a clear path dropped touchdown? Maybe you revisit going for a field goal down in the red zone last time, too? Well, you had to come away with points, but, but uh, 
this UIW team is, man, they're, getting, they're explosive. Yeah, Sher O'Hara pulls it out of there and across the 40-yard line, gets eight on first down. And that's the thing he does. He comes in the game, Asher O'Hara, and he sees Lindsey Scott making a big play with his legs. He does it consistently, 19 touchdowns on the year rushing. And then over 100 yards tonight again. Yeah. He's looking for a, a little bit of a happier ending to this day. He's a big Brazil soccer fan. Oh, they lost an extra time today to Croatia. Argentina, I know they won. And he's following the World Cup closely off of the pitch. And O'Hara's got the first down. Quarterback counter. Able to get a first down. He kind of runs like Neymar, doesn't he? <laughs> Brazilian soccer <Yeah>. star. <laughs> That was a huge upset. And so two plays on the ground for O'Hara. Little jump to get that ball out to Martin. Defender falls down, but help is there over the top. And Martin, maybe a Neymar-like flop, getting out of bounds. Uh, he, he's showing Ryan Coogler that he can act. Because, yeah, he. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> the guy that got juked is always the one that's going to come in late. Ricky Rich <laughs> comes in late after he got juked. Trying to get that back. <laughs> yeah. You can't get it back, man. If you got shook, you got shook. Watch him. 46 is going to come in late after he got shook. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> it looks like there was a reach for the flag. Yeah, he thought about it for a second. Well, O'Hara, after the good start to the drive, gives way to Dunaway. Flag is out as he hits Fulcher on the sideline. First down for now, but Marker is down back near the 45-yard line. These defensive ends have made it tough for the tackles. Illegal shift on the offense, number nine and number four. Moving at the snap simultaneously. Five-yard penalty, replay, second down. It's okay in Canada, maybe, but not, <laughs> not in American football. We saw that arena-like shift earlier. Yeah, yeah when they Running moved across outside. the formation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get the running start. Uh, yeah, both backs in and both backs moving. So wipe away the first down for Marcus Fulcher. Back it up to second and eight. And Scadaboo and Fulcher both still in there. And Dunaway throwing over the middle, and Richard breaks it up. Richard banging into Pierre Williams, and both guys hit each other pretty hard. And pass break up for Brandon Richard. Yeah, he's lucky that wasn't picked off. Brandon Richard drove on the ball hard. Pierre Williams, 84 in the slot, comes in, and look at seven come down hard but nice job by Pierre Williams is just being there in the way and not allowing him to take that as an interception. Now Richard comes out Sanders comes on and over the middle delivered a good ball and Martin has a first down. Went right back to it the same area with, but they use Martin this time. I love how they use those slot guys and tight ends in that area. It's tough to defend. And I made a living playing in right. that area. <laughs> Well, back to the tight end. There's Marshall Martin, and he's got a first down. We he's probably going to make a living. Yeah, we talked doing about it. Scadaboo and his ability to stiff arm. Martin is real crafty after the catch. And they got another Cardinal defender down in the field right at the end of that run. Stephen Parker. So Parker stays down. Fans are saying, hey, are you are you really hurt? We got two guys down. You got Sean Holton down in the secondary, too. Yeah. Uh, back behind where you see Parker. So split duty for the athletic training staff for Incarnate Word here. Well, and these defenses, both of them, are on the field a whole lot in this in these ball games. If you think about it last week, 108 uh, offensive plays or so for Incarnate Word and 86 for Sacramento State. I don't know where we are now, but it's, you know, you've got both of these ball clubs, 79 for Sac State and 63 
for Incarnate Word. There's Parker there yeah. looking at his shoulder. He made the tackle, stayed down after that. And Holton was right along on that play and was running back towards safety, and then he went down. Yeah. It's a lot of plays if you're a defensive guy. Sean Holton with four tackles today, and Stephen Parker. Well, that tells the story of that play right there. Parker and Holton walking off at the same time. And you said it. This will be play number 80 coming up on the night that that Incarnate Word defense has been out there. Mm -hmm. What kind of wear will there be as we get later into this game? Opening moments of this fourth quarter. Lindsey Scott started it with a first play 64 yard touchdown. And Dunaway on second down and one. Shot play to the sideline. Flag is out. And the ball is incomplete. That was almost wrestled off the back of the defender. He had Dante Thompson in coverage. Pass interference. Defense number one. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, he never turned around. Dante Parker and pa Jared Gibson. Gibson gives him that out. Stutter. He never turns around. Almost comes Almost up with the, the catch. Yeah. 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 Defensive back just doesn't get his head around. And Dante Thompson. <laughs> Almost the David Tyree. Yeah. Jared Gibson almost comes away with the catch. So pass interference on the near Tyree. First down and 10. Inside the red zone. And Scadaboo looking to throw. Going end zone. Touchdown. He can pass too. Marshall Martin for six. I'm telling you, man, they are pulling out all stops tonight. You can see him trying to set something up. Scadaboo doesn't have any passes on the year. <laughs> Able to find Marshawn Martin. Oh my goodness. And Sintowski bangs it through. He'll fill up the water cooler. He'll walk your dog. He'll paint your back porch. And Scadaboo, oh, and he can pass. And he'll throw touchdowns. Marshall Mount Martin says, hey, I don't care how I get it. Just get it to me. And Scadaboo, it's not the prettiest thing, but it's effective. Touchdown. But the race to 90 points of this game is on. 86 combined. Scadaboo, the offensive MVP in the league as a runner. <laughs> also can play a little. This is a three quarterback system now. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, onside kick attempts, and Sacramento State covers it up. The surprise onside gets the Hornets the ball back. Wow. Knowing that your defense has played as well as they can, but this offense for Incarnate Word can score, you surprise them with the onside kick. Abel Ordaz recovers it. Incarnate Word had the first shot at that, and then Ordaz slides in to sweep it up. Ordaz does a nice job. Incarnate Word goes in hard, but can't get it. Not able to come up with it. Aaron Reynolds at the bottom of that pile can't get it, but Ordaz can. Wow. And so a chance to take their first lead of the second half, Sacramento State. And out to Scadaboo, who just threw for the touchdown. And Richard gets him to the ground. What did they say about, he said, we just keep believing. No matter how far we get behind, we just, our guys now believe it. Remember what Andy Thompson told us, yeah. the defensive coordinator? He said, like the 2001 Montana team that he was on and played for a national championship and won. You don't have to blow people out to be national champs. They have won got close games. One point difference. Five out of their last six games, all against top 25 teams, have been one score. Uh, out of the vault there. And it's Astro O'Hara for seven yards. It'll be third and short. A sudden change for your defense. You have been in a situation where you think, okay, 
They scored against us. We're not going to be there. And they're going to go. Okay. They got the first down. But then you have to come right back out there. Yeah, forget 90 points combined. How about almost 90 plays for Incarnate Word defensively tonight? Here's O'Hara off of the play fake. And sideline to Scataboo. He's got the first down and more. Still trucking his way inside the red zone. He will stiff arm you and run you over for another one. Talk about tough, hard. He gets better as the game goes on. Does anything they ask him to do. And here's a prime example what he's doing for that offense. Okay, one guy, two guys. Who else wants some of this? You want? Oh, okay. All right. Took about five of y'all to get me down. Oh, special, special player, Cameron Scadaboo. Two running backs in there, and a flare out to Fulcher, and almost picked. Oh, Dante Thompson had a read and a little flare. <laughs> And that would have been a pick six. Balls in the air too long. Dante Thompson can't quite come up with the cleanly. And that would have been a, a huge momentum shift. And this would have gotten the onside kick right back yeah. for Incarnate Word. Fulcher falls down. And luckily for Dante Thompson, he can't come up with the clean catch. Incarnate Word you know, turning around to the defensive front. Maybe changing the call, and that's way out of bounds. There was some confusion up front well, there. Well, no, I think OCP was saying that one of the uh, offensive linemen was moving prior to the snap. Look at those yards. Yeah. Look at those plays. Look at those yards. And then you think about the three turnovers, and they're still in position to go ahead in this game. That onside kick was a, a, a momentum shift. It wasn't a turnover, but it almost felt like it. And we're about to go over 1,000 yards on the night. And Dunaway's in at quarterback on third and 10. Martin underneath, needing the sticks. Got the sticks in the end zone. The George Kittle look-alike into the end zone, and Dunaway's down. Dunaway's down, but a touchdown to take the lead. Marshall Martin. Wow. Dunaway injured earlier in the game, and look at the shock on the face over there on the Incarnate Word sideline, but Marshall Martin, we talked about him as being a key contributor. Look at what he's been able to do tonight two touchdowns in the last two drives. They said he's like George Kittle because he thinks he's going to score every time he touches it. And well, look at did. that run after catch. He was not going to be denied the end zone. So the lead for Sacramento State. Oh, a lot happening on that play. Dunaway down. We'll see if he's out. And Marshall Martin flexing his way for a three-point lead for the Hornets. Well, I think he says, okay, Scatterboo, you get all this credit for how you run through people and run over people. Let me show you how to do it. You want some of this? Come on, get some of this, big boy, because I'm going into the house. Well, Marshall Martin, who they compared to George Kittle in this program with a touchdown, and it's another one for a Sac State quarterback that they might not have seen. Jake Dunaway was down after this play holding his knee. Yeah, Jake Dunaway has been nicked up all night, not able to really effectively see what's happening, but knows if I get it to Martin, he usually does some good work with it. Martin had a huge game last week. Let's see the last four drives, really getting moving. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown, touchdown. Martin last week, 10 catches, 148 yards, two touchdowns. Both career highs for him. Another big playoff moment. And that's in for a touchback. Sentowski just sneaks that in there. Let's see what Lindsey Scott's got again. He's been up for it every time that they've fallen behind this season. And down three here. Yeah. They have really been able to score and score at will these last four drives for both ball clubs. Look at this. <laughs> Pretty similar. We talked a lot of defense third quarter. Yeah. A lot of offensive talk. 
in a loud first five minutes of this fourth. And Scott opened it with a 64 yard touchdown run. And Cooper moves the pile on the first play of this drive. Uh, even when the pass game takes off, you know you've got Cooper you can rely on if you're the Cardinals. Over 100 yards from Scott tonight in the ground. There's Grimes working his way forward. And you got Cooper right on the doorstep for an Incarnate Word team that has run for over 200 yards as a team. Yeah, they've been able to run the football effectively. Grimes and Chafin started to get a little thing going, but they've been down for a while because Sac State has had the ball so long. 67% tonight on third down, and there is the running game. Right out of the cannon with Marcus Cooper. And he says goodbye into the end zone. 67 yards right up the gut. Wow. Each time you think Sac State has figured it out, Cooper says no. Uh-uh. Look at this. Great blocking out front. That one right there on Armand Bailey. And the explosion behind him. Patient to the hole, but fast to the house. Is Marcus Cooper. You love some West Coast football. You're getting it tonight <laughs> at its best. Is this, is this West Coast ping pong? <laughs> That's what this feels like. Oh, my goodness. Incarnate Word comes out and says, look, we're going to give you a little dirty south. And Sacramento State says, OK, neither team has played each other, right? <laughs> Do we want to see them play again? I think so. Unfortunately, right it's there. not best of three. Yeah, blocking right there. Interior offensive line does a great job. And to the house, Marcus Cooper. Well, this game has been late night caffeine. Connor on in, Charles Arbuckle. Nobody getting yeah. stops in the fourth quarter. No. It is not. It, all it is is just running up and down the field right now with these offenses. When you think about the passing game for Incarnate Word, record-breaking quarterback and wide receiver. But around 150 apiece for Scott and Cooper on the ground tonight. So quick answer back in three plays for Incarnate Word. And Tao Tolliver gets past that first surge. And out across the 35. Every time he touches the ball, you better hold your breath because he can take it back as well. And the 95 yarder against Richmond last week. It's kind of crescendoed his returns tonight. It's been short return, a little bit longer, a little yeah. bit longer. Wonder when he might bust one. <laughs> okay, so Astro O'Hara, we'll see if this is all him on this drive. Jake Dunaway, the quarterback who's their quote unquote passing quarterback holding his knee going off after his touchdown throw last drive. And he's handing out for Marcus Fulcher down the sideline and riding the back of Pierre Williams for a first down into plus territory. Scadaboo with a huge block on this one for Fulcher. Really springs him for more yards. You're usually talking about the biggest hitter on your team being a defensive guy but it might just be Scadaboo on Sacramento State. Well, he consistently gets in the in the grill of whoever he's blocking or running, and you've got to bring it each time. Troy Taylor, the Sacramento State head coach, told us a story yesterday about him and pass protection last year against Portland State. Made a guy quit. <laughs> Here's O'Hara stepping up, and the ball comes out. The ball comes out. Amula Becci on top of it and down the sideline. Anya Lebecci cutting back for a touchdown. And he has returned touchdowns this year. That's his fourth one on the season. Wow. Was O'Hara down? Let's see if they take a look at it. 56 yard return. Anya Lebecci, look at eight right there. Looking up, Asher O'Hara, but OCP Cause and disruption. Ball comes out. Yeah, he's up. Yeah, he is up. Ball is coming out. Brandon Richards looked like he's there to knock the ball out, along with Cameron Preston. Anya Lebecci with another return for a touchdown. Had two interceptions, had one touchdown against Houston Christian. 
Another one against Nevada. Actually, that's his third scoring touchdown on the season. And we finally get a stop. Yeah. And of course, it's a score on defense. Game, I mean, momentum changing plays almost every time. Well, that in a defense for Jonathan Patkey called their style of defense football renaissance. It really encapsulates the entire style of play for Incarnate Word. And they're up 11 again. So this has been that wall, this margin, 11 points. Incarnate Word hasn't been able to push it any further. And Sacramento State down 11 for a third time in this game. Well, and it looks like now you have both quarterbacks a little bit nicked up. Dunaway was hurt. Asher came out a little bit. I know he's going to come back, and he knows. Look, I love to see this. But these guys just keep battling. And the defense is, at some point, one defense is going to step up. That was a huge step up by Incarnate Word. But can they stop, actually stop Sacramento State's offense? So O'Hara looks like he's good to go. Yep. Dunaway milling around. He was on the bike. He's been on the bike a lot tonight. Yep. Trying to stay loose. And they've gotten some help in the passing game from Scadaboo. The deepest into the season that they've ever been undefeated. The deepest they've been into the season in general. Incarnate Word trying to go to the semifinals for the first time. So is Sacramento State. Here's Tao Tolliver. And ducked his head down to get to the 30. So even when we've had stops in the fourth quarter, they've been touchdowns. It all started on this play from Lindsey Scott. Yeah, Lindsey Scott recognized nobody in the back in the scatterboo with the touchdown pass to Martin. And then coming right back, onside kick surprises. They can't come up with it. <laughs> Martin again, look at this effort by Martin running through and over people. <laughs> and then Cooper, whoo, looking like a track star. But Anya Labetti, scoop and score. Now one of their biggest wins of the year was against Nevada when he had a scoop and score earlier. Drive starts with Scadaboo. By the way, did you get all that if you're watching back at home? I know. Did, did you get all that? <laughs> can, can we just run back the entire game of highlights? I don't think we have time for that. I don't think we do. So six for Scadaboo on first down. And Fulcher looking for that edge. And a powerful run. Goes surfing a little bit. And he has a first down over the top of Colt. Oh, baby. That second quarter for Incarnate Word took them into the locker room uh, up by 11. And they've led twice by 11 since then. Yeah, the second quarter has been explosive for them and the fourth quarter. Officials have so much going on. They have to take a time to just have a uh, have a conversation. That's such a big part of this, right, is how fast would this officiating crew let these teams play? They're going. Yeah, they are. Jake Dunaway looks like I think he's back in now. He's set to line up at quarterback. There's no foul for legal substitution. We were substitution mechanics. Second down. It should be first down, right? Well, the ball's yeah, up ahead of the stick, so it is first down. Yeah. First down. I'm sure the, the people in Fargo are with us right now. Winner goes to uh, the semifinals to take on North Dakota State, who won earlier tonight. Connor Onion, Charles Arbuckle with you in Sacramento. Dunaway back into the game. Martin on the back shoulder, incomplete. Ryan Mays breaks it up. Yeah, really good play by Mays getting over there in time because Martin, you could see them wanting to sneak him out almost like a wheel route. And Mays does a nice job of breaking that up. Well, you talk about the defense maybe deserving a little bit more credit for Incarnate Word nationally. A lot of that has to do with their corners, Brian Mays and Dante Thompson. They weren't sure how much they would get from them when they, when this season started, but it's done a good job limiting big plays. They really have. And they've had a defensive front that's been able to attack quarterbacks during the season as well. 
Now they fake that end around to Fulcher, and O'Hara dancing in the backfield. And it takes a loss on that play. So it'll be third down and long, midway point of the fourth quarter in a two-score game. We had a huge scoop and score on the last defensive series, and now you got him in third and long. So Dunaway will come back out. Is this a two-for-one situation here on this call? Well, they're getting behind a little bit. They need to pick up some yards in order for them to go for it on fourth down, but the way this game is going, I have no idea at this point. Went back behind the chains on third down. And Dunaway looking for it all. And he got it all to Pierre Williams. Great leaping catch for a first down. Well, Pierre says, hey, let's not worry about fourth down. Let me just go up and make this 29-yard grab and moss somebody tonight. Huge, huge play. Well, we're going to see that on countdown, aren't oh, we? Oh, man, he went up and got that. Really nice job by Pierre Williams. Randy Moss is on notice for later in the weekend. <laughs> and a flag is out. Sean Holton was in coverage, but just couldn't stay up with him. Ball start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty remains first down. So that's Jackson Slater, who again is playing out of position tonight, typically the guard. Here's yeah. Pierre Williams again. In the slot, get by, gets by him, and then just goes up. Really nice job. Sean Holton has not, was not able to stay up with him. But Pierre Williams goes up high and snags that one. Williams motioning into the bunch. And Dunaway at quarterback over the middle. There's Martin, who scored the touchdown a couple minutes ago. And he is down shy of the 10-yard line. First down, they get the penalty yardage back and move the chains with their tight end again. I think that's his 11th catch tonight. But in bunch formation, he just sneaks out. He gets lost in the shuffle. And then look at this. He's going to pick up more yards and get him in the red zone. Well, he was thinking hurdle there. Oh, yeah, he was. Another flag out. False start. Offense number 59. Five yard penalty remains first down. Oh, it worked well for Troy Taylor in the offense last time. They got a penalty. Why not do it again? Yeah, get a penalty and get, lose five and then gain 20. And that was on Nathan Mejia, their center. Second team All Big Sky player. Bunch oh, formation again. again. Yep. Now they shift away from it or bring it over to this side. Okay, so they trade it. And Martin at the head of that bunch. And throw underneath incomplete to Scadaboo. Yeah, I thought he was going to hit Martin in the middle of the field when he hooked up. Scadaboo was there, but Dunaway just couldn't quite get it to him. They run this sometimes to the field, but then they'll go to the boundary and give you that look right there. I'd like to say it's a little scary that we're calling out formations together. <laughs> We called a lot of plays in this oh, game. Oh, man. So be the 95th play of the night on offense for Sacramento State. And Dunaway, play fake, and he banks it in there. And he got Gandy inside the 10-yard line. Still a long way from the marker, though. And Brian Mays made the tackle. Well, I thought we were going to have Mays down for a bit, but he's back up. So field goal, if you don't get it here, would make it a one-score game. We'll get it to eight points. Let's get late, though. Yeah. Five minutes in clock winding. Parker Clayton subbing back in into the slot top side. On third down and eight. There's Dunaway to the end zone. Touchdown! Oh, my! Pierre Williams! I got to go over two guys. Earlier, I'm going to get you, and then I'm going to get it again. Pierre Williams with another huge catch. Again, getting up high, this time on Mays' side, and foot down, touchdown. Wow. Now, Sac State says, can we make a stop? Because they're off and they're going for two here. 
Gonna try to make it a field goal game with O'Hara at quarterback. And they go underneath and in for the two point conversion. It's Marcus Fulcher on the misdirection. Three point game. Great play call. You make it go one way, Fulcher coming underneath and just flip it to him. He wants another drink. <laughs> He's calling for the drink. But you're right, great play call from Troy Taylor. Oh, Troy Taylor dialed up another nice one. You go one way, you come, and you fool the defense. Watch Asher O'Hara, and then just flip it to my guy, Fulcher, blocking out front. Martin with the key block in for six. This for game two. is doing what he signaled. <laughs> has this game been any fun or what? Uh, not too much fun. We just had a lot of points scored, but it's been heck of fun, man. <laughs> These fans have been in it. Both teams have been going back and forth. And now you better pay attention because if I'm incarnate word is an onside kick. If it's not, then how does your deep, how does your offense play to run out clock? Well, most points scored in the FCS playoffs since 1989. Stephen F. Austin Grambling State. What was the score? There's your score. And another onside kick for Sacramento State. That was touched, and they'll have to unpile it. Sacramento State already recovered one. And the Hornets signaling they have and it, and they do. One. Second time tonight. It was Scadaboo out of there with it. What did they say he would do everything? If you told him to go clean the, clean the clothes, after the game, he would do it. Well, he <laughs> onside kick, he goes and gets it. It's been a booby miles like yeah. night for him. And, and we have said, if you don't stop these guys right there, it's McCullers kicks it, which makes it a live ball, and Scadaboo able to get it. It's two onside kicks. Really nice job by the kicker. Ball was touched by the kick, I mean, the receiving team recovered by the kicking team. First that was down, it. Sacramento. That was at eight yards. That yep. was not at 10 yards yet. Yep. But the receiving team touches right. it, so it allows them to then go Live get ball. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's the oh. significance of what you were talking about with McCuller. Had to go 10 <laughs> yards unless it was touched, and it was. This is crazy. Crazy good. Crazy good. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we expected points. I don't know if we expected it to be this deep into the hundreds combined points wise but here we go Sacramento State with Jake Dunaway trying to start a go ahead drive he got Scadaboo to his left and Dunaway complete to Martin and slips out of the tackle has the first down and drags the pile with them into plus territory here we go on this drive. 12 catch on the night. A guy that's just really making himself available for the top, uh, quarterback. Right over the middle of the field, living in that space. And then Anya Labeci has to chase him down. Four and a half minutes to go. Three point game. Another strike from Dunaway. And Pierre Williams catching everything in the second half. Defense getting really frustrated because every time they think they're in position, they can't make a play on the ball. Hit the century mark in plays on this night for Sacramento State. And it's Scadaboo. He's got a first down. A three to tie. Touchdown gives Sacramento State the lead back. They have recovered two onside kicks in this second half. And you have to imagine this defense has to be dog tired after being on the field for all 100 plays exactly. Play number 101. Scadaboo swinging out. Scadaboo on Anya Lebeci makes a miss. And a first down and some more with the forearm shiver. When you get tired, the one thing you do is you miss tackles. Anya Lebeci is usually a sure tackler. Watch eight here. Trying to get out there, knows four is a really good player. I got to stop him. And usually he's a secure tackler, can't bring him down. Sized him up, didn't he? 
Scataboot bouncing back between the tackles, and Charles Pierre gets to him. Well, no matter what stat we give you, it's yeah. going to be eye popping. It's over 700 yards of offense for Sacramento State tonight. Over 500 yards of offense for Incarnate Word. Uh, you talk about guys not wanting to go home, and either one of these teams, they're leaving it out here tonight. We've got another injured Cardinal down in the field. Well, the offense really hadn't had a chance to play as much. I mean, they've had some explosive plays, but Sacramento State has now had the ball a lot in this fourth quarter. You ever play in a game like this? Not quite like this one. What's the closest you got? Whew. I've been at some track meets, but nowhere near the number of back and forth, back and forth. You think yeah. down on the field, just how do you keep sustaining the, the slap back scoring that we've seen? You know, Incarnate Word, Sacramento State, they've done a lot of high scoring yeah. this season. 40 points a game for Sacramento State, number one offense in the country for Incarnate Word. And delivering on that offensive pedigree tonight. And it's Anya Lebechi that's down, Southland Defensive Player of the Year, and their best player on defense. Uh, he's been a guy that has been all over the field. Trying to chase Gadaboo and the rest of this offense down. Had a big return, scoop and score. So Troy Taylor, guy that, that you know going back a ways. East-West Shrine days. Caught a <laughs> touchdown pass from him. He was a quarterback at Cal. You were at UCLA. Had fun reliving that yesterday. Had some good battles back in the day. You guys were talking offense. We previewed this game. Expecting big offense. We've gotten it. Does Incarnate Word have a stand? Up by three points. Hitting the three-minute mark. Winner to the semifinals against North Dakota State. A win for Incarnate Word would send them to Fargo. Sacramento State trying to stay perfect. They would get the Bison at home next week. In the red zone here on second and eight. It's Dunaway in at quarterback. And the fake to Tau Tolliver straight ahead. Fulcher, he cuts inside, and he's inside the five-yard line for the first down. Each time they go to Fulcher in that situation, he runs it effectively. Knows earlier had that almost sure walk in touchdown, but he has just battled. And it's been all positive plays since oh, then man. for Fulcher. He sets up first down and goal. Get to the two minute window here. The Incarnate Word has all three of their timeouts. And they will not stop it on first and goal. O'Hara in at quarterback. Quarterback run, bounces outside, nothing there. And Davison up from safety making the play. And there's one stand for the Cardinals. Clock does stop. Yep. Incarnate word. This will be the first charge time out of the half. This will be a 30 second time out of lead. Please put 147 back on the clock. Please 147 on the clock. Thank you. Add three seconds. I'll take away a timeout for Incarnate Word. So North Dakota State at the Fargo Dome earlier tonight before you were watching our game. Uh, they took out Samford, shutout, pitched a shutout in the first half, and then went on cruise to the 27-9 win. North Dakota State, I would think, are Incarnate Word fans. That means that they get to stay home yeah. next week. Uh, whoever you face, <laughs> you just better be ready for a lot of points. But they do get to stay home if Incarnate Word wins this game. Sacramento State in position to score here and have their defense come back out and stop this Incarnate Word offense. This is Sacramento State team that had never won an FCS playoff game until last week. Incarnate Word trying to go to their first semifinals. 
On the reverse, Martin gets out of the tackle for a go-ahead touchdown. Martin has been able to do it via the catch, via the run. Doesn't matter. Was a running back in high school, scored a lot of touchdowns running. He loves to do it any kind of way, and for sure tonight has had another huge, huge game. Well, last week, slippery conditions. Troy Taylor said, thank goodness for Marshall Martin. I didn't think we were going to catch a ball. Probably saying thank goodness again tonight, giving them a chance to play on with a go-ahead score to make it a four-point game for a guy that's getting some NFL looks at tight end for Sacramento State. Well, this is just one of those guys that's key weapon. Make one person miss and get around the edge. Sakius McKinney couldn't catch him. And then again, with that speed to the outside and able to run and go celebrate with your fans. Is there any more liquid to fill up in those cups with how long of a night it's been? <laughs> I don't know. But I do know this. This ball club talked about just being positive and finding ways to win. Let's see what they can do. Incarnate Word, as explosive as they are, has a chance with about a minute and 43 seconds left in this fourth quarter. G.J. Kinney has done a fabulous job. First year, 34-year-old head coach. He's taken Incarnate Word to a spot that they've never been with his offensive wizardry paired with his offensive coordinator, Mac Leftwich. And they got a game-winning score about this time of the game last week. Do they have one more in them? First, will this kick go deep? And yes, it will. 75 yards to get, needing a touchdown to keep their season alive. Here comes the Walter Payton finalist, Lindsey Scott, to try to put together a drive to remember. Well, you have time. And you've been able to get things going against this defense. Can they do it again? And Andy Thompson has to figure out how to stop them. The most combined points ever. Historic tonight, even if there are no more points. In Sacramento State, led by Andy Thompson, their defensive coordinator on this side of the ball. First play of the drive inside two minutes. And Scott going up top of the first play. Drives almost had the one-handed catch. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Reached around Junell and almost had a banger of a start to the drive. Well, and the attack right in the air, almost with the left hand, just can't quite put, a, put it away. This would have been a huge catch. And would have been perfect in a game like this. So incomplete, clock stops. And a run play late to the clock, and Sacramento stayed all over it. Only three yards there. And it was Mapu, one of their hardest hitters, up to get him. Yeah, Mapu right there on it. Hard at work, going fast. On third down, off the play fake. Scott pumping, looking for the sticks. Got the sticks, and he's vaulted forward across the 40. With the clock stopping as the chains move. He got 14. And two timeouts in their pocket. And Scott getting the call out fast. The chains are set, and here we go. Scott has plenty of time. Barely any pass rush. He winds up deep down the field, and that is dropped. Gavin Davis-Smith tangling with Chafin and exactly a minute to go at second down. Really nice job by Gavin Davis-Smith in a position and almost he's the one that would have come up with the interception. Just misses it. Look at this right there. Chafin overruns it and Gavin Davis-Smith could have put the game away with that interception. The door still open for Incarnate Word. Down by four. Here's Marcus Cooper. He's over 100 yards on the night. First down. And inside Sacramento State territory. With the clock stopping again on the first down. 53 seconds to go in two timeouts. Marcus Cooper with another huge run. Right back up to the ball. Scott looking deep. Time again. He takes off again. And pickles his way into the waiting arms of Mapu. Call a timeout. And they take their 
Second timeout. One to go with 40 seconds left. We talked about the amount of plays that Sac State had run. Se 72 for Incarnate Word. This will be a 30 second timeout. So Scott on the ground and Cooper on the ground. That's how it's been most of the night. That's how it's been on this drive. And this is every time you think it's over and done, somebody finds a way to keep this thing going. And Lindsey Scott's legs have paid dividends and really hurt this defense. And we can't say enough about Marcus Cooper, the runs that he's had to keep this thing going. Incarnate Word became playoff eligible in 2017. It, uh, all girls Catholic school when it was founded. Uh, added football in 2009. FCS playoff eligible in 2017, and they have rocketed onto the national scene. And do they have a drive here to close to get to their first semifinal ever? On second and two. Lindsey Scott winding up again. They get deep shot. Chafin in the end zone, and it's incomplete, but a flag down. And Chafin dragged down Cameron Broussard, likely yeah. called for the penalty. You knew at some point. Pass interference. Defense number seven. 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. In this area, they would attack this defense. And Chafin is there, and you can see just pulling and grabbing. It made it pretty easy for the official to call almost that play. It. Yeah, he almost caught that. And so, Broussard called for that. And the 15 yard penalty has Incarnate Word on the doorstep of the red zone. Scott thinking end zone again. Back pylon. It's caught by Grimes. Was he in bounds? Yes, he was! Touchdown, Cardinals! And they lead! Every time you think it's over, somebody goes and makes a play. And Taylor Grimes is the guy. Wow. He's going to go up and make a play on the football. Has it in his bread basket, gets his foot down. Ooh. Was it moving? Let's see on this angle. Has the ball there. Looks like he's holding it the whole time. Foot gets down. Let's see on this. The replay in the booth next to us is seeing almost exactly what you're seeing. They have six camera angles to look at this, just like we do to bring you. And Grimes for now. The previous play of a touchdown called on the field is under further video review. And again, you have to have, it was ruled a touchdown. And it has to be undisputable video evidence that it can be overturned. So this is a, a big one for Carl, our replay official yeah. next door. 27 seconds left, and for now, Incarnate Word has the lead with Taylor Grimes, who was in that back pylon. His feet were in, but did he catch it? His well, foot was in. Did the, he catch the, it? The ball didn't move. He had it in a position where he just secured it and had his foot down first. The ball never moved once he got it right in between his legs. So you think catch? It looks like a catch to me with the foot getting down, him securing it, not bobbling it. And I think that's the key. Can they overturn it? And like you said, can they overturn it? Rule the touchdown on the field. Well, and it may have helped that he had Gavin Davis Smith there to help him secure it. Because watch, he's going to put it in between his legs. And then when he comes over, he just makes him stay right there. The ball doesn't move. Foot goes down, body goes down. That looks like a touchdown to me. There's that little move of the ball at the end, but it's almost like it was moving because it was pinned, right? 
They're going to look at all the nuances of this. Again, Gavin Davis Smith being there almost helps him keep the ball secured where it doesn't rattle or move. After video review, the ruling on the field of the touchdown stands. Yep. It, it looked like it to me. And I, I think again, big play. And it's just been going on and on. Are we He's done yet? I, I, hey, no. It's still time on the clock, so I would say you play this thing to the final whistle. A huge spot here to make this a field goal game. Carson Moore on the PAT. And clean pass at it, and it's a three-point game. So Taylor Grimes for now has a potential winning touchdown on a deep ball. That's what he had to prove to NFL scouts, that he could – Play deep down the field, and he just came up in a big moment. Football get, football is a game of focus. I mean, you can see all these ebbs and flows, and you can say, oh, well, one play made a difference. But it's just been back and forth. And now you have to stay locked in if you're incarnate word to make sure you don't give them anything because Sac State has shown you. They figure out ways. First, the coverage. Can you cover Elijah Tal Tolliver? And then after that, when they get the ball offensively, they're going to scheme up some things. 27 seconds is not is a lot of time with two timeouts left and the way this team can explosively get down the field. Well, you said how do you bring it down to one play. There have been 200 plays oh, in this game. Oh my goodness. That was the fifth lead change of the night. And there's the guy you were just talking about Tao Tolliver. has been close to breaking one tonight. He opened the second half of last week's win. Sparked the comeback against Richmond to get him into this quarterfinal. That's how Tolliver waiting. A squib. And Scadaboo picks up at the 20. And Scadaboo weaving upfield out to the 35. Field goal could send this game to overtime. Touchdown could win it. Sacramento State's got to go. Two timeouts, 22 seconds left. Yeah, hold on tight. Far from over. The semifinals waiting for the winner. North Dakota State next week. Incarnate Word would go to Fargo. Sacramento State comes back here and wins it. They would host the Bison. Most points ever in an FCS playoff game, leading to this look at our side of the bracket. North Dakota State, Montana State, already winners. South Dakota State, Holy Cross tomorrow on ESPN at noon Eastern. And Jake Dunaway takes the first snap of this drive and fires it over the middle, and Pierre Williams makes the catch across midfield. Has so made, six, 16 seconds to go, clock stops. Has made plays all game long, especially in the second half. Sentowski, the kicker, his long on the season is 53 yards. Clock moving here, though. Inside 10 seconds to go. Dunaway gets it out sideline, and with five seconds left and two timeouts in their pocket, yeah, I don't why didn't they use one? Yeah, I don't understand that. I thought for sure they would call timeout. A lot of time was used on that one. Timeout. Increment word. This will be the third charge time out of the half in their final. It'll be a 30 second timeout in the league. So once that got set after the first down, they lost 11 seconds. And they had they didn't have guys in position and they lost some time on that particular play. So is this one shot to the end zone and that's it? The only other chance you have is to get it because you still have another timeout. You have your, your timeouts left. Get it in position so you can score or kick a field goal. But what's going to happen is they're going to try to force this force them to make a longer play and use up clock. There's the other thing too. I, I thought maybe we we're going to have an announcement. Maybe they would review how much time's left on the clock when that ball went out of bounds on the throwaway. Maybe yeah. not though. It doesn't look like it. Officials came together and talked right over the ball. Yeah, no timeout used with two of them left. I think they thought they could get it going fast, but they didn't. So what could be the last play of 
An absolutely nuts game. Dunaway to the sideline. It's complete, but clock runs out for now. Pierre Williams is out of bounds, and for now, Incarnate Word has won the game. There might be time left on the clock. G.J. Kinney's getting his guys back to the sideline. Five seconds left when that ball was snapped. But hold on now. Game might not be over. Is it one second left? Let's see with the clock when he comes down with the ball. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Ruling on one. the field is a completed catch with the clock and run out. We're checking the time to make sure we're correct. Okay, so it looked at first glance like there's one second. Yeah. Williams catches this along the sideline. Catches it. Down, out of bounds, yeah, one, one second. second. Yep. So from here, it would be a 55-yard field goal. That would be two longer, two yards longer than the season long for Sentowski. That would be for a tie to send it to overtime. Crowd chanting one more second. The previous play is under further video review to determine the time on the clock. Okay, so what we assume will be one yeah. second left. Look at this. This again. is what they're looking at. Goes up and catches it. Comes down. There should be one second on the clock. He was close to stepping yeah. on the sideline too. <laughs> That's true. You can see Troy Taylor right there trying to call a timeout. You're, you're blocked yeah. by the foot of Mays there to see if he was on the sideline. But looking at the clock here, looking at the clock, uh, and see the scoreboard clock behind. Still one second oh, there. He may have been out of bounds. Yeah. If you look there at that angle, look at his foot where it comes down. One second, but is his foot out of bounds? Looks like it. Yeah. You would still have the one second, but then you would have to go all the way back and then just have one play. And that would be Hail Mary time. Yes. At this point, say he's ruled in bounds, there's one second left. Do you kick the 55 yarder or do you take a chance at the end zone? Kick the 55 yarder. But I don't know if they'll have that chance. No, but we think he's going to be out of bounds. Yep. That seems to say one second left. Ball will be backed up. We got 11 yards on that play. So this would back it up to the 49 yard line. And it would be one shot to the end zone to try to win it rather than tie it. Yeah, and, and I think if. If you're Sac State, you would want, after you got that last first down and you had 14 seconds to call the timeout there, because then that would have given you a chance to kind of work on what you want to do here. It, it, it's one of those things, like I said, the focus of football, you've got to stay locked in, and that might be just one thing that happened. This, this ball is going to, if it's not, oh, man, you just, whew, it comes down to just the game of inches, man. You go back and dissect every oh, yeah. single decision in this one. A drop on a clear path touchdown. Uh, the decisions to kick field goals inside the red zone. The timeout decision. But the key is you guys have battled all night long. Both sides. Uh, this has been awesome. Yeah. That's a video review. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. There is one second left on the clock. It'll be third down from the 47 yard line, third and 10. We were all please over. Put it. One second on the clock, please. But I, again, you should have at this point now a little bit more time because you didn't have those timeouts. You didn't use the timeouts that you had. And now you have Hail Mary time, and they're going to put people back in the end zone. And whatever you, if you rush with three or four, you've got to try to find a way to not let Dunaway get set to throw this ball down the field. So there's the prevent defense. Yep. 
A night that has had over a thousand yards of offense over a hundred points comes down to one second in one play. Semifinals to the winner North Dakota State. Looking on from Fargo tonight. With Incarnate Word and Sacramento State trying to go to their first semifinal ever. Be done away at quarterback. And it's a two man rush. Dunaway buying some time. And Dunaway heaves to the end zone. With the season on the line, that ball is incomplete. And Incarnate Word is going to the semifinals for the first time. What a ball game. Oh, my goodness. For two teams that have never met, this is an outstanding finish.